Hidden deep within every fandom are mysteries waiting to be uncovered, and I'll do my absolute best to leave no stone unturned. In my last video, I covered this iceberg image I made, which contained about 80 or so entries, but this time, I've compiled around 400 brand new entries, most of which have not been covered in any other Pokemon iceberg videos. Trust me, I've checked. I've been inspired by my bootlegs to finally make a sequel to the Pokemon Iceberg. If you aren't familiar with the term Iceberg, let me give a quick little rundown. An Iceberg refers to this, an image with an assortment of different facts, theories, controversies, and whatever else I could find. The deeper you dive into the Iceberg, the more dark, bizarre, and overall obscure things get. If you don't agree with where some things are placed, then that's perfectly fine. I just felt like that was the best place to put them. It's best to stop wasting time, because this video is going to be really long, so get cozy. Quick Ball Controversy This is still a relatively new topic, which is why it's so high up. It's extremely fresh, but if I were to wait a few months, it would be a bit lower on the iceberg. Anyways, you still might be wondering what this even refers to. A YouTuber known as Reversal catches a shiny Pokemon using a Quick Ball on stream. The reaction most people had were positive and they were congratulating him. While looking through the comments, though, Reversal found one comment in particular really baffling. The comment was essentially shaming him for using a Quick Ball on a shiny Pokemon. He posted the comment on Twitter and the tweet blew up, but not in the way you'd expect. Some people were actually agreeing with the comment. Then an all-out civil war broke out on Twitter. Many people called the quick ball a mark of shame for shiny hunters, and because of how good it is, elites try to downplay anyone who uses one, which is stupid. Many argue that using a Pokeball that corresponds with the color of the Pokemon is better, and I agree it does look more aesthetically pleasing, but that doesn't invalidate anyone who uses a quick ball. Quit being dumb, guys. Pokeball Button Mash. This refers to the countless amount of people who have claimed that holding down a button or mashing it while catching a Pokemon increases the catch rate. This is an infamous playground rumor, and many of us may have believed it when we were younger. The technique varies from person to person though. For me, it was mashing the B button over and over again because that's just what my brother taught me. I don't think I'd do it anymore though, unless it's just out of raw instinct. Others claim that holding the A button or holding down the D pad also works, and they're just about an endless amount of strategies to try. But I think we all know the ultimate strategy is throwing the Pokeball and walking away, acting like we don't care if we catch it or not. <laughs> I didn't want it anyway. Small Dawn. When Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl were first unveiled to the world, many people were hyped until they laid their eyes upon the chibis, myself included. What? No! What the fuck is All the trainers were now chibi designs, which is a very controversial take in the Pokemon community. However, as time passed, people started liking the chibis more and more. This chibi Don was used in a lot of fan art and memes, causing people to like it more. I'm not sure how the community feels about this decision now, though. I don't really hear many people talking about it since the game's kind of old now, so I guess that's a good thing. Sonic tried saving Pikachu. I'm sure a lot of you have played Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, myself included. The first cutscene of World of Light features all of our beloved characters fucking dying. Great job guys. The only one escaping this massacre was Kirby, but there was another who could have possibly made it out. Sonic could have easily outran the mass destruction, but he slowed down to save Pikachu. And then they both got murdered. Yeah, it was really nice of Sonic to slow down and try to save Pokemon's cash cow, but I just can't help but feel like they knew what they were doing. Sonic Chew confirmed? Three birds in Spanish. In my last video, I brushed over this because I thought it didn't need much explaining, but some people were still left a little confused, so here we go. The three legendary birds from Kanto, Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres all contain a number in their name. If you don't speak Spanish, it's a little less obvious. Uno, dos, and tres in Spanish is one, two, three. So, Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres. This is also how they're ordered in the Pokedex and how they're ranked from best to worst. Sorry, Moltres. First is the worst, second is the best, third is Alex Matrix Red. Viva Diva! <sighs> All right. Pokemon Official Flash Games Around 2010, there was a section of the Pokemon website titled Play Games, which featured a wide array of official Pokemon Flash Games. However, due to Adobe Flash shutting down in 2019, the Flash Games have all been taken down. It's still possible to find archives of them though. I remember playing these a lot when I was younger, so if you want a renegade recommendation, play Gothita's Portrait Panic or Snover's Dessert Drop. Digimon vs. Pokemon During the 90s, Pokemon and Digimon are having an all-out war against each other. Okay, well, it wasn't really them necessarily, more of the fans, but you know. Pokemon fans constantly accuse Digimon of being a ripoff. Although Digimon isn't as popular as Pokemon, I still think it's pretty cool. It's not a shameless ripoff as many people claim it to be. I really like how they handle evolution in Digimon. It's more sort of like a skill tree instead of a linear line. Maybe one of these days I'll give Digimon a shot and play the game. Pixelmon. In 2013, a Minecraft mod took the world by storm. Pokemon and Minecraft combined sounds like such an amazing experience, and it was. However, the original developers of the mod had a sinister secret. The developers had put code into the mod that could shut down servers that didn't comply with their rules or just flat out ban players. Mojang got pissed off and told them to remove it, and the developers posted a terrible apology to Twitter. 
However, they quickly changed their minds and tried covering their tracks by DMCAing a video by GameChap. Then, out of nowhere, Nintendo swooped in to save the day, for once. The project got shut down and Pixelmon was dead. Until one day, in 2012, Pokemon Reforged revived the project. As far as I know, the project is completely safe now with no malicious code whatsoever. Apparently, the current devs are trying to keep what happened under the radar from what I've read online, but now everyone watching knows. I'm not sorry. It's only a matter of time before Nintendo swoops in for round two and ultimately kills the project again. And I really hope they don't because I love Pixelmon. Pokemon Go to the polls. During the 2016 presidential elections, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton were at each other's throats. On July 14th, 2016, at a campaign event in North Virginia, Hillary Clinton made a joke about Pokemon Go. The game was insanely popular during 2016, so it's not surprising that it's made its way to the mass media. Most people mock Clinton's comment for being cringy, awkwardly using Pokemon to pander and get people to vote. I don't know who created Pokemon Go, but I'm trying to figure out how we get them to have Pokemon go to the polls. Among Us. If you've never heard of Among Us before, what's wrong with you? Everyone and their dog knows about Among Us. Among Us has a very similar name to Among Us, and that was enough to corrupt it and send it into the Among Us rabbit hole. I also unintentionally predicted Among Us. In the first iceberg, I made mention of a character called Imposter Oak, and I called him suspicious. So once Among Us took off, the comments came flooding in. You're welcome, guys. I heard you like mudkips. Long ago in the early 2000s, this phrase was used frequently on 4chan. There are many different variations of the phrase, often starting with so. The phrase originated from the deviant art group Mudkip Club. The account was founded on October 5th, 2004, and served as a place users could share Pokemon fan art. The club was not limited to Mudkip though, as the first art was actually of Swampert. The owner of the community began posting the phrase, so I heard you like Mudkips, on other users' comment walls as early as February 7th, 2005. While the motive behind the comments are unclear, the wall messages served as an invitation to join the Mudkip club community. Variations of the phrase peaked in April 2008 because of a deviant art April Fool's prank where all users' avatars were changed into Mudkips. Although Mudkips' popularity has died down significantly over the years, there's still a lot of people who like it. Don't use the phrase now though, it's just an open invitation to get bullied. Voice actor changes. Throughout the anime's duration, there have been some voice actor changes. For the first eight seasons of the Pokemon anime, Ash was voiced by Veronica Taylor, but after that, she was replaced by Sarah Natosheni. Veronica Taylor says that it was heartless to be replaced for no reason, and I agree. But alas, there's nothing we can do about it. I actually really liked her voice. Not to say Sarah's Ash is bad though, they both have their own unique charm. ANA Shorts. I was a little confused as to what ANA even meant, but apparently it stands for all Nippon Airways. They've made several commercials featuring Pokemon airplanes. That's right, there's multiple. In 1998, the company held a contest to design one of their planes, something they've done before in the past. The Pokemon theme was so popular, however, that they even stuck with it, even designing several more. As of writing this video, a new plane has just been revealed. All of these planes result in more commercials. While it is pretty odd, I guess it can help kids who have a fear of flying get over their fear, which is nice. Sword and Shield's poor reception. Before Sword and Shield's release, there was a ton of drama surrounding it. People were saying that the games looked awful, and they were right. But others argued that the gameplay footage was not final, and that they would fix it once the game came out. But they didn't fix it. Like, at all. Along with that, Game Freak cut a ton of Pokemon out of Sword and Shield. People even gave this a term. They were calling it Dexit. Dexit! Once Sword and Shield did come out though, people hated it, myself included. This was the first huge divide in the Pokemon community that I can really remember. It was a whole civil war, and to be honest, it still isn't over. People still constantly fight over every new Pokemon game that releases. I guess this world will never know peace. Pokemon manga. The Pokemon manga has been around for a very long time now, and they're actually pretty great. They have a darker tone than what we're used to in a Pokemon story. And apparently, this is the closest we'll ever get to Satoshi Tajiri's original vision of the Pokemon world. I've only read up until like volume 8 or 9 of the adventures manga, but I recommend it. It's a fun read if you're looking for a more mature take on Pokemon. Pokemon Legends Arceus Skipping. There's many places that you aren't intended to go until you reach a certain point in the story, but that didn't stop people from trying. There's many different ways to reach those locations. It can be as simple as jumping or just engaging in a battle wherever your destination is. You just gotta be careful once you're there though, since the Pokemon are probably gonna be way above your current level. Trust me, I learned the hard way. 4Kids Airbrush Edits. Back when 4Kids still had the licensing for Pokemon, they made a lot of edits to the anime and 
some just looked flat out awful. Here's a few that just kind of suck. Kind of speaks for itself. Serena Kiss. Throughout the X and Y anime, fans shipped Ash and Serena together, and when the anime was about to come to a close, a scene nobody saw coming happened. Serena kissed Ash. And this was the moment that blew Amora Shipper's minds. The Pokemon anime never followed up on it after that, but they're just happy it happened at all. Pokedex entries. Pokedex entries in the Pokemon world can get pretty outlandish, to the point where I'm not even sure if they're even true or not. For all we know, the Pokedex could just be gaslighting the world into thinking that Ponyta can jump over the Eiffel Tower. Huh. Well, what do you know? They really do need to elaborate on these though. Like, some of them have been proven to be true, but then others are just ignored entirely. Some people think that kids are writing these, but I think the Pokedex gathers all of its information on its own. Four Kids albums. In 2005, Four Kids TV released an album with songs from media like One Piece, Sonic, and you guessed it, Pokemon. Most of the Pokemon songs are just anime intros, but several of the songs in the album are in there twice because, well, I don't really know why actually. I guess they just thought nobody would notice, but I noticed. Weed can when the starters for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet got revealed, people saw Sprigatito for the very first time, and a lot of people started calling it Weed Cat, resulting in a ton of fan art and edits of Sprigatito doing drugs. Doesn't help that its eyes are fucked up. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl failure. The Pokemon community has been begging for Diamond and Pearl remakes for years now, and one faithful day, it finally got announced, and was quickly considered the worst thing since Illumise and Volby. Jesus fucking Christ. People hated it so much, and hey, I did too, but it grew on me a little bit, and I was willing to give it a shot, and then I was severely disappointed. How do you fuck up a one-to-one -one remake? I'd rather just play the original. TCG shortage. There have been countless times Pokemon cards have become almost impossible to find, and you have scalpers to thank for that. It's gotten so bad to the point that Japan literally had to set an age restriction on Pokemon cards because fat middle-aged men kept buying all of them and selling them for profits. I never got the whole craze personally, but you do you. The Misty Lure. Misty likes fishing, so of course she has many different lures she uses to catch water-type Pokemon, but she claims that her best one is the one of herself. That's right. She made a lore of herself. Not just one, she made multiple. We've seen five different versions of this lore. So either she's right and it's really effective, or she just has a bit of an ego. And I think we all know what the answer is. I think Chris Hansen could make use of these though. Firestarter Chinese Zodiac. There's a theory that each one of the Firestarters represent an animal on the Chinese Zodiac. Those being the dragon, rat, rooster, monkey, pig, dog, tiger, and rabbit. Some of these are a bigger stretch than Marth's grab range though. You can't convince me that Cyndaquil is supposed to be a rat but people will do anything to keep the theory alive. Generation 9 introduced Flycoco, who basically ruined the whole theory, but that's okay. He didn't know any better. Honest. Movie collectibles. When a new Pokemon movie gets released, they like to release collectibles to go along with them. And there's way too many to show here, but some notable ones are the Ancient Mew card, the Dragonite card from the first movie, and the Detective Pikachu cards. They're pretty cool to have, although they probably aren't too rare since, you know, literally everyone who saw the movie has one. That shouldn't matter too much. Fat Pikachu. In the 90s, Pikachu was a lot more rounder. Like, really round. Look at him. Since then though, Pikachu has become a lot thinner. Sword and Shield gave a little nod to its early fat design though with its gigantic Antimax form. See you guys, good things can come from bad games, most of the time. UK Poke Rap. I'm sure that all of us have heard the Poke Rap. I mean, it's iconic. But apparently there's a dub of the rap where a British person raps instead. It sounds really cursed after hearing the original so many times, and I don't think anyone could ever top the original, so don't even try. Ash is gone. Ash's story finally came to a close. He's been the center of the Pokemon anime for 25 seasons, but he's gone now. It's honestly kind of sad. Even if I didn't watch the Pokemon anime as much as some other people, I still liked Ash a lot. I grew up watching him start his adventure, and to see him finally achieve his goal is so surreal. I haven't watched Pokemon Horizons yet, but I've heard good things about it, so I'm pretty excited. Bug was weak to poison. In Generation 1, Bug was weak to poison, and poison was weak to bug, meaning that Parasect had a double weakness to fire, flying, and poison. In Generation 2, the type effectiveness was updated so that bug had a normal effectiveness on poison, and poison now resisted bug. I wish they kept this though, it just makes a ton of sense. Pesticide kills bugs, but I guess they didn't want to make the bug type complete garbage, so I guess they get a pass. Poke Raps. On top of the UK Poke Rap I mentioned earlier, we actually got two more. The GS Poke Rap, along with the Hoenn Poke Rap. The GS Rap is pretty solid, but the Hoenn one is just an embarrassment. I hate it. The GS Poke Rap was later repurposed as the intro theme for Pokemon Chronicles, and I think it does a good job. Splatoon X Pokemon. Splatoon 3 had a Splatfest a little before Scarlet and Violet's release. You got the chance of choosing between Sprigatito, Fuecoco, or Quaxley. I of course went with Team Fuecoco, but unfortunately we were completely and utterly destroyed. Quacks 
actually won, which makes me mad. Fuck you, Quaxly. Pokemon X Squishmallows. On July 20th, 2022, the official Squishmallow Twitter account tweeted a sneak peek at a future Pokemon collab, and the community went fucking insane. Later that year, on November 22nd, a Pikachu and Gengar Squishmallow were released, with more to follow in future waves. Then, on April 27th, 2023, Togepi and Snorlax were released as well. And as of making this video, a third wave has been announced featuring Piplup and Pikachu again. But this one's winking, which is apparently enough to warrant an entirely new Squishmallow. Who knows what other Squishmallows we'll be getting in the future. If Zorua becomes a Squishmallow or even Billup, I'll lose my mind. Pokemon X Miku. Out of nowhere, Hatsune Miku and Pokemon announced a collaboration. They released a Miku of every Pokemon type along with 18 tracks to accompany them. At the time of writing this, they haven't dropped it yet, but I am in love with the ghost type Miku design. It's so good! The ground type one is great too. I hope the tracks turn out well too. Hypno's Lullaby. Hypno's Pokedex entry in Fire Red reads, It carries a pendulum-like device. There once was an incident in which it took away a child it hypnotized. First of all, what the fuck? That's some EDP type shit. But yeah, anyways, this entry inspired its very own creepypasta. In the creepypasta, Hypno tries to lure children with its pendulum and lullaby. You gotta be pretty stupid to fall for that. Oh hey. Sammy Paradox. In the fourth Pokemon movie, Ash travels back in time to meet a young Professor Oak. And of course, young Oak sees Ash with his Pikachu, but that creates a few problems. Oak was the one who gave Ash his Pikachu, so was he saving Pikachu specifically for Ash all along? It is pretty strange that he had it lying around his lab conveniently placed as a fourth starter. I don't think he would have forgotten meeting Ash. And at the end of the movie, it was hinted that Oak does remember what happened. So is there an alpha Pikachu out there? Where is the original Pikachu Ash had in the first loop? It's a lot to think about, so let's just move on. If you're happy and you know it. A video was posted on the official Pokemon TikTok account. It had two people in a Pikachu and Lucario outfit. Nothing seems out of the ordinary until you listen to what the audio is saying. If you're fucking happy and you motherfucking know what cover motherfucking hands. If you're fucking happy and you motherfucking know what every motherfucking hey yeah hands. If you're fucking happy and you motherfucking know what and you really motherfucking wanna motherfucking show it. If you're motherfucking happy and you motherfucking know what every motherfucking hands. If you're fucking happy and you motherfucking know it, clap your motherfucking hands. Someone 100% got fired for that one. What I think happened was some poor Japanese man was looking for some trending audios to use, found this one and innocently chose it, not knowing what the lyrics were actually saying. Misty and Jesse's mallet. In the early episodes of the Indigo League, Misty and Jesse were seen using comically large mallets in a few gags, but this was quickly dropped and never seen again. It's unknown why this gag was dropped, but some people think that it was because of the show's rating being for kids. But I don't really think that's the case, because they literally show guns later on in that same season. Maybe they just forgot about it? Who really knows? Charmander Gummy Bear. In Super Smash Bros. 64, one of the stages you can play on is Saffron City. A wide variety of Pokemon can show up as stage hazards, one of them being Charmander. It even shows up and does a little cry. However, the cry can easily be misheard as Charmander just screaming, Gummy Bear. Hacked giveaways. Around the time of Generation 6, it was pretty common to see these types of hacked giveaways, usually in the form of YouTube videos where people beg you to subscribe and comment in order to receive one. Game Freak started cracking down on these sorts of videos and banned a lot of people mysteriously receiving shiny level 100 Pokemon on the GTS, when that was still a thing. Now it's just locked behind Pokemon Home, which is pretty stupid, but I digress. Apparently though, these types of giveaways still go on, this time in the form of Link Trades and Wonder Trades. I'm not sure if Game Freak are actively cracking down on those two, but time will tell. Lieutenant Surge swears in episode 14. In the episode Electric Shock Showdown, Ash's Pikachu is battling Lieutenant Surge's Raichu, and Raichu seems to be winning. Brock points out Raichu doesn't have fast attacks because it evolved too soon, and Ash takes advantage of this, telling Pikachu to use agility. When Ash points out this weakness, Surge answers with, okay Raichu, give it a thunderbolt. However, in the Japanese dub, he simply says, god damn it. This is one of the most relatable moments in the entire Pokemon series, as I'd do the same. Hammerlock Ghost Girl. In Hammerlock, a young girl named Paula asks you to deliver a letter to a boy named Frank. It turns out that this boy is an elderly man who remembers Paula as a childhood friend. He mentioned she was very sick but never learned the truth, which is that she died shortly after Frank moved away. The player doesn't tell this to Frank and he is left with the thought of Paula still being alive. When you return to Hammerlock, the girl is gone, but a reaper cloth remains where she once stood. I like this one because it's different from the other ghost girls in the series. Instead of just appearing for like five seconds and never being seen again, you gotta do a little side quest to learn the story. Scarlet and Violet Crunch Accusations. Before 
Before Scarlet and Violet even released, people were accusing Game Freak of rushing development. This is mostly due to the choppy frame rates that were seen in pre-release footage, and these claims only continue to grow once the final game came out. It ran extremely poorly, to the point where it was just straight up impossible to ignore, and you would think they would have fixed this issue by now, but nope, the frame rate still looks like a slideshow presentation. Tynamo Line has no weaknesses. The Tynamo Line is pure electric, meaning it should only be weak to ground types, but because it has the ability levitate, it can't be hit by ground type moves. Yeah, sure, things like Mold Breaker can still negate it, and they're not the first Pokemon without a weakness. Sableye used to have no weaknesses too, but then Fairy type ruined it. But as it stands right now, they're the only Pokemon without a weakness. Paridon Wheels When Scarlet and Violet legendaries were first revealed, people started to theorize that these Pokemon could be used as motorcycles. And they were right. Maridon was a futuristic motorcycle thingy, and the wheels functioned as wheels. Who would have thought? But soon you'll understand why that's so mind-blowing. So you would think the same would apply to Caridon, but no. Turns out that these wheels are just glorified pool floaties, not wheels. I don't know why they didn't just get rid of the wheels or make them work as wooden wheels instead. Wheels are the oldest invention ever, so it wouldn't even be that outrageous to have them. Penny watches anime. Towards the end of Scarlet and Violet, Nimona, Arvin, and Penny all gather together in a room along with Gita. When Gita asks her to do something, Penny is hesitant and says that there was a lot of anime that she missed and she wants to binge it all. I feel like Penny smells bad. Mega Evolution is painful. When Pokemon introduced Mega Evolution, each form got their very own Pokedex entry. But they revealed the horrifying truth about Mega Evolution. It turns out that Mega Evolution causes extreme pain to the Pokemon using it. Scizor and Houndoom's bodies literally melt Sableye's gem grew too big and it got ripped out from its body, and Glalie broke his jaw. So much for the power of friendship. Raichu evolved. In Pokemon Red and Blue, you can trade a Raichu for an Electrode on Cinnabar Island. Upon receiving Electrode, the person you just traded with claims that the Raichu you gave them evolved. How? Although the idea was scrapped, Raichu was actually supposed to evolve at some point. It would have been named Gorochu. In an interview with Ken Sugimori, he said that it was removed due to game balance issues. I don't know how that makes any sense, but okay. Penny's dad. It's never really said who Penny's father is, but there's a theory that it might actually be Peony. Peony has a daughter named Peonia, who we nicknamed Nia. Penny claims that her father gives her nicknames too. Peonia and Penny, on top of having very similar names, also have Pikachu and Eevee based accessories respectively, which could make them counterparts as Pikachu and Eevee are often paired together. It still hasn't been confirmed whether this theory is true or not, but maybe we'll find out in the DLC. Brock and Misty's last names. Eric Stewart and Rachel Lillies are credited as the voice actors of Brock and Misty respectively. What's weird though is that their full names are listed as Brock Harrison and Misty Williams, but because this information is not officially from Pokemon and are never mentioned anywhere else, it's safe to say that these names are not canon. Rumors also said that Misty's last name was Waterflower, but again, without any official sources. Detective Pikachu 2. Detective Pikachu is supposed to be getting a sequel. That includes both the game and movie. The game is called Detective Pikachu Returns, and the movie is just called Detective Pikachu 2. Real creative. Nobody really cares about the game though. Not even the Pokemon company. It's being marked at $50. I really hope we get to see more Pokemon from recent generations appear in the movie, since the first one mostly just had Pokemon from generation 1 through 3. Pokemon Tower Defense. Pokemon Tower Defense was a fan game from long ago. You were able to catch Pokemon and use them as towers. The mechanics of Pokemon are very well executed, and the storyline was decent to say the least. But with the Adobe Flash Player no longer being supported, the game's servers were shut down and all existing data has been lost. However, the game has been made playable once again by dedicated fans. Nice job, guys. Polyrath, don't miss. The official Pokemon Twitter account posted a GIF with the caption reading, Polyrath, don't miss. And it was just an anime clip of Polyrath absolutely decimating a Sea King. I can imagine someone at Pokemon saw the episode and thought to himself, I gotta post this. To be honest, I just wanted an excuse to bring up this tweet because I know I'll never get another chance ever again. So. Yeah. Koro Koro leaks. If you've been in the Pokemon community for a while, you've 100% heard of Koro Koro. But what is it? Koro Koro is a monthly Japanese magazine that just shows off a bunch of gaming and anime related things. They like revealing Pokemon related things in there and some people get the magazine early, resulting in leaks. I actually found this really old post from when black and white Koro Koro leaks were first dropped in 2010. It's pretty interesting seeing people's initial reactions to characters, Pokemon, and whatever else was shown. Pokemon Brick Bronze. This was a very popular Roblox game that a lot of people adored, but it eventually got shut down due to copyright. I never got the chance to play it, but it plays just like a Pokemon game. Even with the 3D sprites ripped from it, just in Roblox. There's a new version of the game up now though, and it goes all the way up to Generation 9 surprisingly. From what I played of the new version, yeah it's pretty much just Pokemon, and I have no idea how it's still up. Pokemon 3D and 4D. Pokemon 3D Adventure Mew Osagase and Pokemon 4D Pikachu's Ocean Adventure were two short films released around 2005. The reason they're named this is because
because they're a 3D and 4D movie. I had no idea what a 4D movie was up until now, but apparently you can feel and smell the movie. Sounds strange and dystopian, but sure. The first movie was Pikachu and friends trying to find Mew, and the second one was Pikachu and friends going on a vacation and finding a treasure map looking for a treasure called Waylord's Tear, which is in a sunken pirate ship. One sounds way more strange than the other. These two films are lost media now though, so good luck finding it. DMCA'd hunting game. Around 2022, a Pokemon first person shooter was revealed, and then immediately DMCA'd. It didn't even have a chance to breathe. The game, while bare bones, did look kind of cool, and I'm getting COD Zombies vibes from it, which I love. All that remains is this footage of Pokemon charging at the player, them shooting them, and fighting legendary Pokemon as bosses. It would have been really cool to see what kind of mechanics this game could have offered, but alas, it'll never see the light of day. South America. South America is mentioned to be the home of Mew. In a diary presumably belonging to Mr. Fuji, the creator of the Cinnabar Lab, and the person who created Mewtwo, it's said that on July 5th, they discovered a new Pokemon in the jungle. More specifically, Guyana, South America. In the games, Mew has only one known habitat, being Faraway Island, but it is unknown if these two locations are the same or even connected. It would be kind of funny if among all these fictional regions, there's just one that's South America. Lions versus Pokemon. This was a popular debate from a while ago. Who would win? One billion lions or one of every Pokemon? The earliest known mention of this was all the way back in 2011 when Black and White had just been released. The roster has now more than doubled since then. The main arguments in favor of the lions usually rely on the actual game mechanics, whereas those in favor of the Pokemon are often lore based. I think it's pretty obvious that one of every Pokemon would win. They're just a bunch of animals with superpowers. How would you lose to a normal lion? Taller Rosa. According to Pokemon Masters EX, Rosa is taller than Hilda, which just feels wrong in a way. A lot of the Pokemon Masters proportions are kind of strange though, so I'm not even sure if this would be canon. I did the math on this Rosa figure, and I'm not going to go all mat pat on you guys, but the figure is 1 to 8 scale, and 7 inches tall. So if I were to scale it up, that would make Rosa 142 centimeters or 4 foot 6, and Hilda 170 centimeters or 5 foot 6. But I don't know if it's her ponytail making her taller. Putting the figures side by side, Rosa does look shorter, so I don't know. Maybe I'll make a video about it later, but don't expect it soon because I'm awful at math. Point is, scale is fucked up in Pokemon. Sword and Shield Peanut Bug Leak. Leading up to Sword and Shield's release, we got a ton of leaks, some of which being faked. And this peanut bug was one of the fake ones, which is unfortunate because I actually really liked it. A lot of people thought it was real, myself included, and this could have been our first bug dragon Pokemon, Holon region. The Holon region, or Holon, I don't know how you say it, is a region only mentioned in the Pokemon trading card game. The people of the Holon region were searching for Mew, and used the magnetic properties of the area to produce electromagnetic waves to track it. This ended up having side effects though. Those same waves mutated some Pokemon into having different types, and thus, Delta Pokemon were born. I always wondered what these things were, so it's nice to actually finally have an explanation. Pokemon Z. Pokemon X and Y are the first games in the franchise to not receive a sister game. With Zygarde being the third legendary of the trio, fans speculated that naturally, Pokemon Z would be the next game, but we never got it. Zygarde did get some special attention in Generation 7, with it getting two new forms, but it kind of felt shoehorned in like they were putting scrapped ideas together. We did get leaks of Pokemon X and Y sequels in the form of a data mine, and they were supposed to come out after a Mega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, but before Sun and Moon. So the timeline does line up. I really wish we got these games, but alas, they're gone forever. Dennis. Before we got much information on Pokemon Black and White, the soundtrack leaked in Japan, and when people heard Getsis' theme, they misheard the chanting in the background of the song. They're supposed to be saying Getsis, but many misheard Dennis instead, which I think is hilarious for a villain name. No, not Dennis! <laughs> Chin Pokemon. Chin Pokemon is a parody of Pokemon that was seen in South Park. The name Chinpo slash Chinpoko is actually just slang for penis. Thanks. The episode went from kids liking Japanese toys to Kyle almost helping bomb Pearl Harbor. Yeah, that more or less sounds like a South Park episode. Gen 4 is slow. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl are notoriously slow. Saving can take up to 20 seconds, which is just outrageous. The sluggishness doesn't just end there, though. The HP bar takes forever to go down in these games, so if you have a Blissey at full HP, get one hit KO'd, go take a vacation, get married, settle down, and maybe it'll be done by then. Apparently the reason it's so slow is because instead of the usual speed of percent per second, it's HP per second, which is a lot slower. Higher quality animations. There was a ton of controversy regarding graphics and animations leading up to the release of Sword and Shield. Many people called Game Freak lazy for their poor attempts at animating Pokemon. I mean, can you blame them? Some of them just hop around. So when their excuse for cutting the Pokedex down to a select few Pokemon was to create higher quality animations, fans were outraged. And I don't 
don't blame them, because seriously, what what is this? Pokemon Picross. A Pokemon Picross game was announced in various gaming magazines in spring of 1999, but the game was never officially released. And you would think that's the end of it, but no. In September of 2020, a prototype ROM of the game was posted online. Even though it was just a prototype, the ROM was fully playable, complete with 217 puzzles, and even had credits. All 151 Pokemon got their own dedicated level, and Togepi even shows up. The fact that this game was basically completed makes me wonder why it was never released. Homebrew exploit. The Pokemon Precross madness doesn't just end there. There's a ton of different methods of homebrewing your Nintendo 3DS. A dog could do it. And one of the methods just so happens to involve Pokemon Picross. You just gotta have it installed. I found this Reddit post of someone experiencing an error while trying this method, and I know it's just a coincidence, but I love how the screen turns red and white. It's like a Pokeball. Pokedex book errors. There have been many Pokedex books made in the past, and a lot of them contain errors. Some of the more notable ones are marking Rotom and Spiritomb as legendary Pokemon, showing the wrong images, getting gym badges in the wrong order, wrong type matchups, the list goes on. I can't talk about every single one or else we'd be here forever, so let's just move on. Pokemon Heroes Blue Tint. There's a ton of Pokemon movies, but none of them have ever been altered quite like this. When Pokemon Heroes released its dub, the entire movie was given this really strange blue tint, making the colors a lot darker throughout the movie. I never noticed this when I watched it as a kid, so either the version I have didn't have it, or I'm just blind. Nobody knows why this filter was put on the movie. It's all really strange, but I guess we'll never know. Friend lock. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the term Nuzlocke, but have you ever heard of a friend lock? It's the same basic premise, just instead of you controlling your Pokemon, your friends control them, which can make it a bit of a nightmare to say the least, but it leads to some pretty funny moments. I tried doing one, and uh, yeah, it was interesting to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got this guy. No, just kill the baby! <laughs> I should survive. <laughs> oh, oh, no, Talk like Elmo from like little it. kids. Anime Lily Likes Ash Before the Aether group went off on a mission, Lily wanted to tell Ash something and was really embarrassed, but then she was interrupted by Gladian before she could tell Ash. Aurelia shippers believed that Lily was going to tell Ash that she liked him, but Serena swooped in for the kill before she could, so... Mel Metal Can't Eat Max Soup When the Isle of Armor DLC dropped, you could feed your Pokemon Max Soup so that they could Gigantamax. However, this didn't work with Mel Metal. Despite it having a Gigantamax form, the only Mel Metal capable of Gigantamaxing was the gift Mel Metal you get from Pokemon Go. This Mel Metal is also shiny locked, meaning that there's no legitimate way to get shiny Gigantamax Mel Metal. PokeRap GS meant for Johto League Champions. The credits that were included with the PokeRap GS on the Spell of the Unknown DVD release state that they will be added to the end of Season 4 TV episodes, but it never was. Pokemon Gold Rescue Team Pokemon Red and Blue Rescue Team are unique in that they're the only pair of games that released on two different platforms. But what if I told you it's actually a trio of games released on three different platforms? This was a free PC demo of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team. The demo was released exclusively in South Korea on August 11th, 2007. It could be played up until meeting Zatu at the Great Canyon. And if you're looking to play this version of the game, you're out of luck, as the demo required a connection to an online server to function, meaning that it can no longer be played. I think this is one of the few examples of a Pokemon game officially being released on a PC. Crystal Onyx Terastalize. In episode 87 of the anime, Ash and friends find a Crystal Onyx. It's all blue! and it's apparently weak to fire type attacks. I would have just ended it at that, but the anime has been notorious for foreshadowing future gimmicks, like Mega Evolution, Dynamax, and now Terrastalization with Crystal Onyx. Maybe this is an actual Onyx Terrastalized to be an Ice type, it would explain why it's weak to fire types. T-Rex in the third movie. The third Pokemon movie actually had a completely different plot to what we know now. Takeshi Shudo, the main writer of the anime series up until that point, as well as the first two movies, posted some information about this on his blog. The original plot of the movie would have delved into the mystery of how the world came to be inhabited by Pokemon and what happened to the real world animals that once existed in the past. This would have been explored through the discovery of a fossil in the Pokemon world, including the fossil of a real world Tyrannosaurus Rex. No, I'm not kidding. The fossil would have been revived, leading to it going on a rampage across the Kanto region. Ash, Pikachu, Brock, and Misty, and even Team Rocket would have spent the movie trying to stop the T-Rex. Shudo spent half a year writing this plot, but it was shot down by the producer because, quote, a story where a bunch of minerals gain consciousness and come to life won't be a hit. 
Night at the Museum says otherwise. Brandon is Paul's father. Some people think that Pyramid King Brandon is the father of Paul along with his brother Reggie. They look extremely similar to one another and Paul's goal is wanting to beat Brandon. They never really acknowledge their possible father-son connection. And honestly, if Brandon really is Paul's father, he's not a very good father figure much like everyone else in the Pokemon series. After Reggie lost to Brandon, that's when he decided to become a Pokemon breeder instead. It's so strange, but for right now, this is all just a coincidence. Future Pokemon Legends games. With the success of Pokemon Legends Arceus, it's only natural that we'd get another Legends game. I, along with many people, believe that Legends Kirim is the next step in the series. Other popular theories are a Johto or Hoenn based game. I made a video all about Legends Kirim, so watch that later. Smasher Pass. Markiplier uploaded a video where he went over all 898 Pokemon at the time and answered one simple question, Smash or Pass. He's made some questionable choices, smashing Pokemon like Magneton, Waylord, Excavalier, and Hollow Sand. Please get out of the sand pit. This video blew up and resulted in other people making their own Smasher Pass list. Matt Pat even joined in, creating a video where he designed the ultimate Pokemon Markiplier would smash. I hate it here. Soak move inspired by Pikachu vs Onyx. The anime is filled with errors, but in some cases they happen to become mechanics later on, one of those being Soak, which turned the target into a water type Pokemon. In the fifth episode of the Pokemon anime, Pikachu fights Brox's Onyx and it's not looking too good, but Pikachu gains the upper hand when one of his attacks set off a smoke alarm, causing sprinklers in the building to go off and soak Onyx. Is this cheating? Maybe, but Pikachu is then able to damage Onyx with electric attacks, despite it doing close to no damage earlier. This was more or less just anime bullshit, but in Generation 5, the move Soak was introduced, and some people theorized that Soak was inspired by this very scene. Free Porygon versions of Episode 1 through 37. After the Electric Soldier Pokemon incident that caused many seizures among viewers in Japan, the show was put on hold for a bit, and when it returned, all episodes were edited to slow down flashes or make things less bright, even if they didn't cause seizures previously. Pokemon Legends Arceus Starters Japan Origins. The starters in Pokemon Legends Arceus are unique because they each come from a different generation. It sort of makes you wonder why these starters were chosen to begin with, and the answer has to do with Japanese culture. Each starter represents an aspect of feudal Japan. The Sijuai is an archer, Samurai is a samurai, and Typhlosion, well, it turns out that Typhlosion's name comes from Bakufu, which means blast, but it also means shogunate, a shogun being a military ruler. I hope the next Legends game has this much thought put into their starters because it's such a cool detail. Verity is Cynthia's niece. A popular theory is that Verity from the I Choose You movie is Cynthia's daughter, because in the movie, we see a photo of Verity's mother, who looks exactly like Cynthia. The movie's director, Kunihiko Yuyama, has debunked this theory though, so fans went to the next best thing, saying that Cynthia is her aunt instead. Nice save, guys. This theory does have some weight to it though, because Cynthia is known to have a sister, but she's never seen in any media, and the woman in the photo is her sister, making Verity Cynthia's niece. Scarlet and Violet Bad Shinies For some odd reason, Scarlet and Violet has the worst Pokemon Shinies in the entire entire series. I have no idea why half of them are pretty much the same, the other half just look bad, and then there's the few that actually look kinda good. I thought the era of bad shiny Pokemon would've ended in generation 6 since that's when they started hand choosing them, but I guess not. Nimona Goku People say that Nimona is the Goku of the Pokemon world because of how much she loves to battle, and she's not very smart but a genius when it comes to battling, and I love it. She's the perfect Mexican icon we need in Pokemon. Dragon Ball and Mexico go hand in hand. Look, I know the region is Spain, but her only other Mexican representation is Halucha, Lombre, and Ludicolo. Let us have this. Gardevoir. This is the patient zero of Pokemon Rule 34. Well, there was probably some before Gardevoir, but I don't want to think about it. Fans sexualized it to the point where if you say that Gardevoir is one of your favorite Pokemon, people look at you weird. Look what you did, you sick fucks. Don't even get me started on low punny. Gen 4 uncapped frame rate mods. As I mentioned earlier, the Generation 4 games are notoriously slow, so some people took it upon themselves to fix that, and they did this by creating a mod that uncaps the frame rate. To be honest, it might might be a little too fast now, but it's really interesting to look at because this isn't what I'm used to seeing. Twitch Plays Twitch Plays Pokemon is a Twitch channel where you, the viewer, can actually decide inputs for the game. The first game ever played was Pokemon Red all the way back in 2014. In the 17 days that it was up, it got over a million participants, giving it a Guinness World Record. It's also played some other mainline Pokemon games, some ROM hacks, and even Red Rescue Team, which lasted for nearly an entire year. Twitch Plays Pokemon is also the origin of Lord Helix and Bird Jesus. They would sometimes open up the menu just to look at the Helix fossil like they were praying to it or something, and Bird Jesus was just a Pidgeot that came in clutch a lot. Cerulean City Afro 
Afro. Cerulean City Afro refers to the man standing in front of a Cerulean cave in Pokemon Red and Blue. The man's hair is the same color as the entrance to the cave, making it look like he has a large Afro. In the Let's Go games, the cave entrance looks totally different, but the man still stands beside it till this day. Some people say that he's top 10 in the verse, maybe even stronger than Afro Luffy. Slam is translated as Door Slam in Spanish. This one more or less just speaks for itself. When translating the move Slam to Spanish, they use the word Portazo, which pretty much just means Door Slam. This lasted all the way up until Generation 6 when it was changed to Atizar. Portazo is just way funnier though. Bring it back. Misty paid full price for her bike. The bike shop in Generation 1 initially has the bike price set at 1 million Poké Dollars, but thankfully you can get it for free with a bike voucher. But that's with the bike voucher. And most people probably didn't use that. So it makes way more sense why Misty was so upset at Ash for destroying her bike. She paid a million dollars for a bike and some kid stole it and fucked it up. I don't know where Ash is gonna get a million dollars, but that's not my problem. Pokemon Art Style Shift. This can refer to many different things. The anime has had a very drastic art style shift. It used to be way sharper, and I really liked the way it was looking. But then Sun and Moon made everything more bubbly and expressive, and a ton of people didn't like that change. In Pokemon Journeys, they settled on a mix between the two, and honestly, I think this one fits pretty well, but I still prefer the sharper style. And I hate that James's little hair strand looks so boldy now. This can also refer to how the games are going through an art style change right now. The trainers look completely different to what they would have looked like in Sword and Shield, and I hate it. They're going for this strange, more realistic, uncanny valley look. I know Sword and Shield didn't do a lot of things right, but one of them was the art direction and character designs. They were great. Fallers. A faller is someone who has passed through an ultra wormhole, and when passing through an ultra wormhole, these fallers get exposed to an energy that lingers within them. Ultra beasts are capable of sensing this energy, targeting these fallers for unknown reasons. Some notable fallers are Looker and Annabelle. Annabelle lost her memories, and so did Looker and Oras. It's not known why this happens, though. Minnesota. This is another time a real-world location is mentioned in Pokemon. When Brock says he didn't know Vikings were still around, Ash replies by saying that they mostly live in Minnesota. I have no idea why Ash of all people would know this, but alright. Thanks, Ash. My favorite regions. Kanto, Johto, Minnesota, and South Africa. Shaman, thank you. Some people hear Shaman's cry and hear it saying thank you. You might need to slow down the audio a bit to hear it, but it's definitely there. Gastrodon Shell Several Pokedex entries state that Gastrodon used to have a large shell in ancient times, and that evidence of it can still be found in its cells. Its current shell is still very hard, but way thinner and smaller than what it used to be. No artwork of what it would have looked like has ever been shown, but maybe it'll show up one day as a paradox form or maybe even a regional variant. Moist Critical In Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, when challenging the Mountain of Era gym, you face against a trainer named MC Sledge, who already bears a striking resemblance to Moist Critical. But the similarities don't just end there. His name is literally MC MC, which just so happens to fit with Moist Critical perfectly. And just when you think the coincidences end, nope, there's even more. One of Moist Critical's most infamous clips is one where he's screaming, that's what we've been waiting for. You've probably seen it, but in case you haven't, here it is. Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for! That's what it's all about! Woo! And MC Sledge just so happens to say something very similar. This is what you've all been waiting for. There is absolutely no way this is all just one big coincidence. It all fits way too perfectly. Dr. Lava's cut content. Dr. Lava covers a ton of old but really interesting information about Pokemon. What he basically does is buy old Japanese magazines containing Pokemon interviews with Ken Sugimori or whoever else is there and pays to have them translated. He posts it on his website, Dr. Lava Cut Content, and there's a whole treasure trove of information there. So thank you, Dr. Lava, for your contributions. It's very helpful. For the girls. Takeshi's Paradise is the ninth Japanese ending theme of the original series, and while no official English translation has been released, the scenes where Brock sings a segment of the song was kept in the English dub. So la la la, look at my smiling face, there are lots of girls, I'm in my happy place. So la la la, this is my paradise, so live on. Oh, late, yeah, yo. The Pokemon Company International dub took a slightly different direction with this song, calling it For the Girls. In Strategy Tomorrow, Comedy Tonight, Brock sings these lyrics. La 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 la, I kinda like this song. La 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 la, why don't you sing along? La 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 la, I sing my la 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 for the girls. For the girls, yeah! 
very strange and kind of creepy. De-evolution. Slowbro can devolve if Shelter detaches from its tail, but there's actually some evidence that other Pokemon can also devolve. If Slowbro can devolve, surely Slowking can too. There's also Magneton, who can likely be taken apart as seen in the Mystery Dungeon games, where two Magnemite were taken apart. The same should, in theory, be true for Doug Trio, unless they're all connected to each other underground. Mousehold would probably just need some divorce papers to devolve. Sil Valley just needs a hat. Yeah, that's it. One confirmed case, though, is Executor. Multiple Pokedex entries state that any head that falls off will become part of an Execute again. One you probably didn't see coming is Vanillax. One Pokedex entry states that it can live even if it loses one of its head, which would mean, in theory, it would just be a Vanillish again. There's also many instances in other media where de-evolution happens, like this Eevee from the manga and certain TCG cards. It's all over the place. Calyrex Blue Dynamax. For some odd reason, when Calyrex Dynamaxes, it has a blue aura instead of the red one ever everyone else has. Some theorize that Calyrex Dynamax is using its own power, rather than Eternatus' power, which if true would explain why it's blue, but not much else is known. Clickbait. You've seen it. I've seen it. It's really shameless to say the least. There's a ton of Poketubers clickbaiting and milking anything they can. New leaks? Real? This breaks the meta? Insane new leaks? They use the same thing in every thumbnail, and it's just really sad. I'm not gonna say any names, but you know the people I'm talking about, and they know who they are too. Dexit. As I mentioned earlier, yes, this is a real term. Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire were the last games to contain a national Pokedex, with the Generation 7 game still allowing every Pokemon to be used in-game. Generation 8 was the first generation where all Pokemon weren't able to be used in-game. The name Dexit is a parody of Brexit, because the Galar region is based off of Great Britain. It's really clever, actually. Graffiti art style. When Pokemon was getting localized in the West, they wanted to redesign all 151 Pokemon in a graffiti art style because they thought it would be more appealing to Western audiences. This is because graffiti art was on the rise in America at the time, and they created some mock-ups of what a graffiti style Charmander line would look like. And it's kind of cool to look at, but I'm happy they stuck with Sugimori's art. Pokemon Go AI art. Pokemon Go was accused of using AI art for one of their backgrounds, and I can see why. It doesn't look like it was made by a human. And there's a strange lack of Pokemon Pokemon related details in the image. When accused, they responded by saying, Niantic uses a variety of tools and software to create visual assets. We don't disclose specifics around our processes. Which is the worst response you could ever give. Holy shit. It's such a shame. They have so much money, so they have no excuse to get an AI to make this instead of commissioning an actual artist. Toya and Pokemon Masters EX. This is a great example of what the Pokemon company should be doing. Toya Roki is a popular Pokemon Twitter artist, and for Christmas last year, she partnered with Pokemon Masters EX to give us a nice little Christmas themed illustration. It's honestly such a surprise. You don't normally see the Pokemon company commissioning fans to help with art, at least not outside of Japan. So this was really cool to see, and they should be doing this instead of AI art like Pokemon Go did. Scarlet and Violet Trainers. Sort of back to the art style shift, the Scarlet and Violet Trainer models look so gross. A good majority of the community agrees that they look awful, and I am praying that the next big Pokemon games doesn't have these types of models. They were doing perfectly fine before. Pokemon Masters EX is the perfect way to bring Pokemon characters to life. You might not think that the Scarlet and Violet models look strange now, but imagine seeing a character from an old game return in the Scarlet and Violet art style. You'd see their individual hair strands, creepy face, and weird noses. They would look uncanny and like a former shell of who they're supposed to be. Vaporeon. Much like Gardevoir, Vaporeon has been sexualized to all hell. The big difference here being that Gardevoir is more humanoid, so it's somewhat understandable. Same goes for Lopunny. But Vaporeon is just straight up a water dog cat fox thing. This all stems from one 4chan post that became a copy pasta. I'm not going to be reading it because it goes way into detail describing why Vaporeon is the most compatible Pokemon for human breeding. I don't know who wrote this, but you're not allowed any dog parks anytime soon. Pokemon Learning League. Pokemon Learning League was a web-based educational series that used characters from the Pokemon anime to teach kids science, math, language arts, and life skills. The animations look atrocious, and it was later shut down in 2008. Good riddance. Rayquaza is in its primal form. Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire introduced two new forms for Groudon and Kyogre, those being their primal reversion forms, which are very cool and their shinies are amazing. But for some odd reason, despite Rayquaza being third in the trio, it got a Mega Evolution instead. It's strange. You would think all of them would match each other, but I guess not. But this does bring up two questions. Does Rayquaza have a primal form? And do Groudon and Kyogre have Mega Evolutions? And some people actually speculate that Rayquaza is in its primal form. Primal reversion restores a Pokemon's true powers, meaning the Pokemon undergoing primal 
primal reversion are actually weaker than what they used to be. This theory implies that Rayquaza never lost its true power and has likely been active since the last battle between Kyogre and Groudon, which was over 2,000 years ago. Anime Ash Greninja Ancestors In Pokemon Legends Arceus, we were introduced to a bunch of characters who look a bit familiar. The reason being is that they're all actually ancestors of modern day Pokemon characters. While it's not outright confirmed, it's pretty obvious that they're related in some way. They must have some pretty strong genes though if they were able to look so similar even after all these years. Some are pretty obvious like Kameido and Professor Rowan, Silene and Cyrus, Volo, Kogita and Cynthia, and Arezu and Mars just to name a few. If we get another Legends game, we're likely going to get even more ancestors. Hiroki This random Pokemon character from the anime named Hiroki is modeled after his Japanese voice actor, Abarerikun, a cast member of Meetup at the Pokemon House, whose real name is Hiroki Kabari, Temtem. Pokemon has a monopoly over the creature catching genre, more or less anyway. Any other game that tries this formula typically ends up failing, and this holds true with Temtem. This was being hyped up as the next Pokemon killer, but it ended up killing itself. Okay, well, maybe it's not dead per se, more or less on life support permanently. When you're trying to dethrone Pokemon, you have a lot to live up to. And I don't know, I don't really like the art direction in Temtem, but they did take this platypus fake mon and put it in their game, so that's pretty cool. This is sorta unrelated, but this new game called Pal World looks really promising, and I'm actually pretty excited for it, so hopefully it doesn't suffer the same fate. Kalos and Paldea. When you open the map in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, you can see an area being hidden by clouds, but what's hiding? Since Paldea is based off of Spain and Kalos is based off of France, people think that the clouded area is South Kalos. They seem to match really well relative to where they would be in real life, and I'm guessing we were supposed to be able to explore South Kalos in Pokemon X and Y too, but you know, that never ended up happening, so this would be the perfect time. Determinant Values I'm sure you've all heard of IVs, also known as individual values, but apparently they're also called determinant values. I've just never heard anyone refer to them as such in my entire life. It sounds like someone wanted the term to catch on and it went nowhere. You failure. Armored Pokemon Hoax Again, we have some more fake leaks from the Sword and Shield era. This one was pretty cool too though. The Pokemon company trademarked the phrase Armored Mewtwo, and people started freaking the fuck out. The reason this was given so much credibility though was because someone on 4chan correctly predicted the title of Sword and Shield, along with it taking place in Great Britain. One of their claims was that the two legendaries would be a metal snake and a wooden horse. But the biggest claim was that armor evolution would be a thing, including Pokemon like Armored Charizard, Armored Mewtwo, Armored Flygon, and Armored Zeraora. So the fact that Pokemon trademarked Armored Mewtwo made it seem way more credible. The post also said that Mel Metal might play a part in it, seeing how it sort of just left ambiguous in the last game. Similar to how Zygarde didn't play a role until Generation 7, the guy got half their information right, so maybe they were really lucky, or maybe Game Freak changed their mind. Who knows? I think the armored Mewtwo thing was just part of the movie though, since in the first movie he does get armor. Foreshadowing next game. Pokemon has foreshadowed future games countless times. In X and Y, we got the strange souvenir, which at the time we had no idea what the significance of this was, but then we got to Alola and it all made sense. In Generation 7, we saw a poster of what looks suspiciously like Gigantamax Toxtricity. And what made this even more believable is that the poster is found literally inside of Game Freak's office. We don't know what Scarlet and Violet could be hiding, but if I had to take a guess, it's probably related to India. I like the seal. I'ma be honest, I just really wanted to show you guys this clip. I love it. Seal, 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 seal. I like that charming prince. I like the seal. You would. Go Fest 2022. Pokemon Go held an event in 2022 where players could pay $15 for tickets to get special advantages. Many players, however, faced a ton of glitches such as getting kicked out of raids, spawns instantly vanishing as soon as you click them, decreased spawn rates overall. It was awful. Many people consider this event a total disaster. Cobblemon. Some people don't really like how detailed the Pokemon and Pixelmon are, claiming that they don't really fit with Minecraft's art style. So some people came together and made Cobblemon. Another Pokemon Minecraft mod, but this time the Pokemon actually look like they belong in the Minecraft world. I think it fits really well and it's still getting updates, so keep a lookout. Crystal Clear Pokemon Crystal Clear is a ROM hack, but not your typical one. This one is actually really cool. It's open world, you can pick from 24 starters, you can start in any town from Kanto or Johto, there's Pokemon palette and character customization, the map changes, Pokemon can follow you around, and you can buy your very own house. I don't really like playing Pokemon ROM hacks, but this one sounds really interesting, so I want to give it a go. Mega Flygon. In Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, a ton of Generation 3 Pokemon were getting Mega Evolutions, and a lot of people really wanted Flygon to get a Mega Evolution, but it never got one, which was really strange. But the reason we got was stupid. The reason we never got a Mega Flygon was because they couldn't come up with a design that was cool enough. Literally anything is better than nothing. I just want more Flygon support. I love Flygon. Pikachu song. This is a really old song, so there's a good chance a lot of new Pokemon fans have never heard it before, but if you're a longtime fan, you've 100% heard it. Some of
Someone took the song Butterfly from Smile DK and made a Pikachu remix. Well, I say a remix, but it's just Pikachu saying Pikachu <laughs> over and over again. So make of that what you will. This was uploaded all the way back in 2009, and it's probably older than that. So it's really dated, but the 2000s vibes are overflowing with this song. Centro Leaks versus Riddler Koo. Two major leakers in the Pokemon community are Centro Leaks and Riddler Koo, but they both hate each other. The reason is because Centro Leaks quote unquote stole a bunch of leaks Riddler Koo would post, which I think is really stupid. It's kind of like when people get mad at me for quote unquote stealing facts. You can't steal a fact. Knowledge is free. Nobody owns a fact. Sure, you can source where you read it from, but it doesn't really matter because chances are the source you're citing quote unquote stole it too. Those are just my two cents, but yeah, it's really dumb. Even though Centro Leaks now credits Riddler Koo, Riddler Koo still bashes them every now and then, which is just immature. Just let it go, man. You got what you wanted. Hypno's Lullaby FNF. I've already talked about Hypno's Lullaby, but there's also a Friday Night Funkin' by the same name. They adapt a bunch of different creepypastas into songs, and I think they're pretty good. They even made their own original one called Shinto. Unfortunately though, the mod was cancelled because one of the team members leaked the mod a few days early, and I was just gonna end it at that. But a few days ago at the time of writing this, it was announced that it's actually back in development, and I'm pretty excited for it. I don't know if this means that they're just now starting development again, or if we're getting a version 3 of this mod this year. But either way, it's good news. Shit knows the best song. Ice Punch Blazik an Apology. Around 2014, the official Japanese Pokemon website for Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire stated that Blaziken could learn Ice Punch, which just straight up isn't true. They later went ahead and made a whole apology for it, which is really crazy to me, because if this happened today, the Pokemon company would most likely just sweep it under the rug and change it without saying much. Pokemon Stars. Following Sun and Moon, fans begin to wonder what Pokemon game would be next. Thus, Pokemon Stars was born. Even though the sun is a star, so Pokemon Eclipse would make way Way more sense, but I digress. People speculated that Necrozma would have been the box art legendary, Lily would have returned from Kanto, and this would have been the first Pokemon Switch game. Instead, we got Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, which was kind of lame, not gonna lie. Most people who played the original Sun and Moon didn't complete this one, at least most people that I've asked, including myself. It just felt too similar early game, which usually isn't a problem, but Sun and Moon is very story heavy, and you can't really skip most of the cutscenes. Water Arcanine. During the buildup of Sun and Moon, there was a Chinese leak that accurately predicted some information. Information. So naturally, people started to bite and believe the rest of it. More specifically, a bunch of Alola forms, like a fighting type Alakazam, a fighting poison Nidoqing slash Nidoqing, a dark type Raticate, a fighting flying Dodrio, and a psychic bug Butterfree. But out of all of those, people were anticipating the water Arcanine the most. Unfortunately though, the leaks were not true, and the only one that ended up coming true was the dark type Raticate, which was probably just a lucky guess. Tailless Galarian Ponyta. During a 24 hour long live stream, a little before Sword and Shield's release, several Pokemon Pokemon made their debut, one of these being Galarian Ponyta. Multiple were seen actually. However, one of them didn't have a tail, but this form was never seen again. It's unknown whether this was intentional or not, but I'd have to assume that it was intentional, right? I mean, you would think they'd use the same model for all the Ponyta, so why doesn't this one have a tail? Some people think that it's just a scrapped form. Sword and Shield Beta. A beta build of Sword and Shield was leaked a while back, and it's pretty interesting. It had a completely different title screen that looked really cool, and I kind of wish they kept it. There was also some early build maps and you could originally move the camera instead of being locked in one position. There was also a female Rotom Dex that looks really cute. It's pretty cool seeing what could have been. Chinese Riddlers. We get a lot of leaks from Chinese sources, but they aren't your average ones. Instead of just showing or telling us, they make people solve dumb riddles like they're the Riddler or some shit. I used to think it was cool, but now it's just annoying. It just lets people who clickbait milk these leaks even more. The only riddles I sort of like are the full Dex ones where they just show you the full Pokedex with no context. It's pretty funny. Marvelous Bridge Girl. In black and white, you can see a girl on Marvelous Bridge, but they don't really say anything, and if you got too close to them, they disappear. An old lady explains that a girl used to play with her Abra before the bridge was built, and that her spirit still roams around the bridge. In black and white too, the ghost girl appears again, this time in the strange house. It's implied that Darkrai had something to do with her death because she was having nightmares. The Lunar Wing is known for curing nightmares, but unfortunately, she didn't receive it in time, and now she wants to return it to Cresselia. Celebi Movie Special Edition When four kids dubbed over Pokemon Forever, they could commissioned OLM to add scenes to really get the point across that Sammy is Professor Oak, because I guess they thought we were too stupid to realize. Anyways, after they got their scenes, the scenes were actually dubbed back into Japanese, airing it as a special edition of the movie in 2004. It was lost media for a little bit though, but luckily, people found it and re-uploaded it online. Elite 4 Giovanni In early builds of Red and Green, some data hinted that Giovanni was an Elite 4 member, taking Bruno's position. This could explain why Bruno's Elite 4 music is called Rocket Hideout. Nobody knows why they changed their minds, but 
but I wonder how much this affected the plot, if it affected it at all. Pikachu virus. This was a computer worm released June 28th, 2000, and was believed to be the first malware geared towards children because of the use of Pikachu. The victim would receive an email titled Pikachu Pokemon, and upon opening it, it would display this message. The worm itself appeared as an attachment to the email, titled Pikachu Pokemon.exe. It was mainly spread through Microsoft Outlook emails, and once you were infected, all of your contacts would also receive this email. The website that was included in the email led to a near identical copy of the official Pokemon website. It was believed that this website downloaded a Trojan to your PC, or maybe it was just a phishing site. You may be wondering what the virus even did though. It just straight up deleted System32 from your PC, which if deleted would render the entire PC useless. Thanks Pikachu. Alpha Sapphire Extreme Randomizer. Originally, I put this on the iceberg because Tyranitar Tube gate kept it from us, so it just became lost media. But when I went to go back to do a little bit more research, I was surprised to find out that it's been released to the public, sorta. Okay, from what I understand, these aren't the same people who worked on the original Alpha Sapphire Extreme Randomizer, but a different team that made the newer Divine Diamond Extreme Randomizer for BDSP, and they're going back to recreate the older Extreme Randomizers. They're also working directly with Tyranitar Tube, which is pretty helpful, but you would think you would have the original ROM, right? But I guess not. I guess the original one is still lost media, but at least we have the recreation. They have no plans to release Divine Diamond, which I guess makes sense because I don't know the legality of releasing Switch game mods, so maybe we'll get it in a few years. Unless another team has to recreate the recreation team's creation. Grookey slash Rowlet Gen Switch. Some people believe that Rowlet and Grookey swapped generations. This is because a drumming monkey feels like it would fit the tropical theme of Sun and Moon, whereas Decidueye is based on Robin Hood, a British legend. I doubt this one is true, but it's a fun thought. Every Spinda is personalized. I know you guys always see the personalized entries on icebergs, but this one is just straight up true. If you caught a Spinda, it pretty much is your own personal Spinda. The odds of someone else having the exact same Spinda pattern as yours is so low it's pretty much impossible. There's over 4 billion different Spinda patterns, and that's not even including shinies. It's pretty cool. Mel Metal Glowing. For some strange reason, Mel Metal glows yellow whenever he goes near these crystals in Cerulean Cave. It's not known why this happens, and as far as I know, this only happens with Mel Metal. Camilla is back. In the first Pokemon Iceberg, I mentioned this character named Camilla in the files of Pokemon Masters EX. She was unused and was intended to be a second rival. However, she was never released and her files were just straight up deleted, and that was that. But now, her data was reinstalled in version 1.5, and she was officially introduced into the main story, now under the name Tina. Camilla was a way better name than Tina, though. That's the name an elephant would have. Pokemon X Fire Emblem. There was gonna be a Pokemon Fire Emblem crossover, but it was scrapped because Pokemon Conquest was too similar to what they wanted to do. We don't really know much else, but I wish this became real. I feel like Pokemon fans would really like Fire Emblem's gameplay, and this would have been a nice way to get them acquainted with the series. Furry Monorap. Yes, it's as bad as it sounds. Someone made a parody of the first Pokemon opening, but it's filled with sexual innuendos and the most degenerate things you can think of. The most infamous part of the song is where Vaporeon starts rapping, and as much as I hate the lyrics, I have to admit she was kind of popping off. But then I comprehend what she's saying and all flow is lost. Pikachurin. Pikachurin is a real life protein that was first discovered in 2008 in Japan by Shigeru Sato. The protein was named after Pikachu, inspired by Pikachu's quote unquote lightning fast moves. I don't know much more than that because I suck at biology and nothing I read made any sense to me. Inside a Pokeball. Nobody really knows what's inside a Pokeball. The way a Pokemon of any size can fit into a Pokeball is a mystery that has remained unsolved since the very beginning. A popular theory is that Pokemon get converted into energy to be stored. We see a red beam of light take them inside, so I guess it makes sense. Leventon says that all Pokemon have the innate ability to shrink in size, so maybe that's how? I wish we got an actual answer, but maybe even Game Freak doesn't know. Jinichi Masuda says, It sure would be interesting if Pokeballs existed in real life, but in terms of what's inside of the Pokeball, it's a space that's incredibly comfortable for Pokemon, so comfortable that they would want to enter the Pokeball without any outside encouragement. What's actually in there is something we would like for people to sort of imagine on their own. In terms of whether humans can enter that Pokeball or not, it's called a Pokeball, so probably not. I think it's just for Pokemon, and that's more or less all we get. Lumio City Ghost Girl. In Pokemon X and Y, if you went to a specific office building and went to the second floor, you'd be met with an apparition of a hex maniac who creepily glides across the ground and says, no, you're not the one. It's stuck with a lot of people, and it's the most infamous ghost girl in Pokemon. I made a full theory about who she might be, so go watch that later. Four Kids Are the Devil Explained. In the anime, there's a scene where James is heard screaming while in Victory Bell's mouth. It may sound like gibberish, but if you were to play the scene backwards, James says this. Leo Burnett and Four Kids Are the Devil! Leo Burnett! 
Some fans thought that Eric Stewart, Brock and James's voice actor, may have left that hidden message there to poke fun at Burnett's idea of animation commercialism and mock 4Kids for upsetting fans who didn't like the edits and censorship 4Kids made to the anime. In 2011 at MatsuriCon, a fan asked Stewart about this quote, and he confirmed that it was intentional and said he did it because he was no longer being paid for his short commercials while working for 4Kids. In 2016 at MetroCon, another fan asked Stewart about that quote, and we learned a little bit more about the situation. He said he was being paid a lot more for doing commercials than the actual show itself, but 4Kids decided to give the advertising company a bunch of voice lines he did so they wouldn't have to pay the voice actors for commercials anymore, costing Stewart his healthcare plan and a lot of money, and that made him pretty understandably mad. Him and the voice director got in trouble for putting the joke in, and they had to pay for a new version of the episode with their own money. In the new version streaming on Pokemon TV, the backwards line is replaced with James screaming. <laughs> Volo time traveled. There's a theory that Volo time traveled to the past to mess up events and see Arceus. That or he's actually from the past and time traveled to the future. This probably also explains why Cynthia has two ancestors, despite neither of them acknowledging having a connection. Wonder Tomb slash Wonder Eye. This refers to a spirit tomb or Sableye hacked to have the ability Wonder Guard, making it immune to all direct damage since they wouldn't have had a weakness. This is no longer possible though now that fairy types a thing. There was actually still one move that could hurt these two in their prime. For some reason, Fire Fang in Generation 4 was bugged and could hit things through Wonder Guard. Takeshi's Paradise removed because parents complained. We're back to Takeshi's Paradise. Apparently this ending was removed after 6 episodes without any explanation. Some people think that it's because Japanese parents complained that the theme was too weird and they removed it after. This wasn't the last time we saw it though. We actually saw it recently in Pokemon Journeys episode 139. Brock and his Ludicolo break into dance. This was censored in the English version though. They took away Brock's maracas and Takeshi's Paradise instrumental was also removed. But Brock's Ludicolo is still heard singing the original song. Pokemon trading figure game. You've probably heard about the trading card game, but what about the trading figure game? Chances are, you haven't, because it was officially discontinued on June 2nd, 2009. You basically use these little figures of Pokemon to fight. The now discontinued Pokemon Duel mobile game used rules that were almost identical to the TFG. In fact, many of the figures in Duel were based on real figures from the TFG, with slight tweaks. Watergate. Before Black and White were released, the starters evolutions were leaked and posted on Serebii. Many people hated the designs, most notably Samurai, and they believed that these weren't real Pokemon, but instead hoaxes that Cerebi had fallen for. This led to actual fan sites being created for the sole purpose of proving that these were fake. These beliefs were supported by some analysis images that convinced many people that these were just edited versions of already existing Pokemon. Superior was believed to be an edit of Milotic, Ambor was believed to be a combination of Lahi Lahi and Rhyperior, and Samurott was thought to be an edited Dialga. Both Cerebi himself and Bulbagard and Webmaster Archaic soon appeared on VP and entered the arguments themselves like some sort of messiah. Eventually, more scans leaked and confirmed that these leaks were real, but the arguments had already spread across the Pokemon community, and that's when the floodgates opened and there was mass hysteria. A member of the Oshawa line was given the name Water, hence the name Watergate. It's also a play on the real-life Watergate scandal, pretty clever. Paradox that attacked Arvin. In Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, Arvin mentioned being attacked by a Paradox Pokemon while in the Great Crater, but we never get told which one. The exact dialogue changes depending on which game you play, referring to an ancient or future Paradox Pokemon, so it's hard to pinpoint which one it is. And he never really has a moment of Hey, you're the one who beat the fuck out of me and my dog! So either we actually haven't seen it, or he's just too scared to speak up. Pikachu's goodbye exists because of Porygon incident. After the Electric Soldier Porygon incident, the series went on a four month hiatus, and the first episode that aired after this was Goodbye Pikachu, which was created during the four month hiatus. This episode was pretty sad because Ash and Pikachu almost parted ways. Some think that this episode was made to manipulate the viewers into feeling bad for Pikachu after the whole incident, since it kinda was Pikachu's fault. He's the one who caused the explosion after all. Movie 10 Darkrai came from Mystery Dungeon. In Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Time, Darkness, and Sky, the storyline results in Darkrai getting injured, losing its memories, and getting sent to the future. This happened because the portal he originally traveled through got destroyed by Palkia. It's likely that this portal can connect to different universes though, because the player is transported from your world to the Pokemon world. In the 10th Pokemon movie, we meet an injured Darkrai with no memories, and we don't know where it came from, so it's likely that it came from the Mystery Dungeon universe. Flareon has no moves. This is really shocking, and you might be a little confused at first. Surely Flareon is a good moveset, right? Well, 
No, not really. Its level up moveset is pretty terrible, with Fire Fang maybe being the only good move. I say this because it has Stab and Flareon is a physical attacker, so special attacks won't be as useful. When you take a look at the moves it can learn with TMs, it doesn't really get much better. So I'm sorry to say, but Flareon just kind of got screwed over. Shelter's Mega Form. Here's Slowbro, and here's Mega Slowbro. Do you notice anything? It's not Slowbro who changes, but the Shelter on its tail. Several Pokedex entries even say that Shelter changes, but Slowbro practically stays the same. This means that Mega Slowbro is actually Mega Shelter with a Slowpoke in its mouth, which means that the Mega Stone has the wrong name and colors. Nimona the Yandere. In Scarlet and Violet, we're introduced to Nimona, and like I mentioned earlier, a ton of people refer to her as the Goku of Pokemon, but some fans refer to her as a Yandere and a Stalker because she obsesses over the player being their rival. I like the Goku approach way more than the Yandere one. It just kind of seems weird and sounds more like fans projecting their fantasies. Nazi Imagery. This entry refers to several instances of either the anime, games, or TV. CG where people complain about apparent Nazi imagery, the most known one being Registeel's sprite in the international version of Diamond and Pearl. This sprite was edited in the European version because it looked like a Nazi salute. Thank god they never did this again. In Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, you can get the Time Travel Award for transferring a Pokemon from Diamond, Pearl, or Platinum. This award would display the Pokemon's original sprite on it, which means that Nazi Registeel was back. This was later fixed in an update though. Some other instances of Nazi imagery are Team Rocket's salute in the Japanese anime and a Manji symbol appearing on Koga's ninja a trick card, Pokerus. I talked about Pokerus in my last iceberg, I think. But anyways, this is an in-game virus that makes your Pokemon game EVs twice as fast. It's really helpful for competitive players, but for some odd reason, it's completely missing in Scarlet and Violet. Despite being present in almost every mainline Pokemon game for years, maybe they're all vaccinated now. I don't know. Shiny trainers. In Pokemon Battle Revolution, there's several Colosseums that one can challenge. Some have Colosseum leaders that wear Pokemon-themed clothing, but these costumes actually have a chance of being shiny and with shinies, of course, comes shiny hunters. This particular hunt is pretty challenging because with optimal luck, you can get five encounters an hour. The first person to ever find and obtain one of these costumes was Professor Tops. After 8,736 attempts on up to eight consoles at a time, he obtained the shiny Groudon costume on May 12th, 2022. Other than Groudon, there exists costumes for Kyogre, Lucario, Electivire, Roserade, and Pachirisu. Good luck if you're actually crazy enough to try and find one of these. Advanced Generation Episode 101. This is an unaired episode and has never been seen anywhere. The reason it never aired was because this episode featured earthquakes, and right before this episode aired, an earthquake earthquake happened in Japan, and they have never aired it since. It's now considered lost media, some thinking that it will never see the light of day. Gita is evil. Gita isn't really liked by the other Elite Four members and gym leaders for being too bossy. I also think it's strange that despite her already being defeated by Nomona and the player, she insists on keeping her title of champion, whereas in other games, the champion is perfectly fine with stepping down from their position once they're defeated. There's just something off about her. Glamora. People think that there's more to Glamora than what meets the eye, saying that it'll play a big part in the DLC. I think I think it is very strange that you can find Glamora in Area Zero, and now also the Crystal Pool. It likely has something to do with terrestrialization, seeing how it's made out of crystals. Glamora is also Gita's ace, so with people suspecting that Gita is evil, all of this is really strange and they're probably going to play some big part in the Indigo Disc DLC. The Pokemon Iceberg Explained Three years ago, I made the original Pokemon Iceberg, and since then, I've been asked to make the sequel many times, but I never really felt the need to because there just wasn't enough content to warrant a sequel. I like making sequels only when necessary. Necessary, you know? And you might have noticed that around the beginning of the video, I took a lighthearted jab at the other icebergs people have made. I don't have a problem with the creators, it's just that none of them really brought anything new to the table. It was all just regurgitated information. The original Pokemon Iceberg was a passion project of mine. I literally made the whole video on my phone. And for this video, I went out of my way to look for 350 plus brand new entries to prove that these other iceberg videos are just people being lazy. If you want something done right, you gotta do it yourself. I'm honestly surprised my first iceberg did so well. Looking back at it now, it was awful, but I guess that just shows how far I've come. Pokemon Sleep When I originally wrote down all of this, Pokemon Sleep was just a dead project, with no announcements or updates after its reveal. But now the game has finally officially released, and is alright, I guess. I thought it would feel more rewarding, and might actually help my deteriorating sleep schedule, but nope. I'm forever doomed. India-based region exists. In Pokemon Fire Red and Pokemon Sun, Raichu's Pokedex entries state that it can make an Indian elephant faint. Obviously, this is already weird because yet again, a real-world location got mentioned, along with a real-life animal. Generation 8 introduced Kaparaja, an elephant Pokemon whose name comes from the word Maharaja, which means Great Ruler. Young Goose is based on a mongoose and was first introduced in Alola, a region based on Hawaii. In the early 20th century, the small Indian mongoose was introduced to Hawaii and became an invasive species. In 
wouldn't you know? Young Goose's Pokedex entry states that it came from another region. So yeah, it's pretty likely that there is a region based on India. Professor Ivy is a lesbian. When Ash traveled to the Orange Islands, Brock went to go stay with Professor Ivy and was replaced by Tracy. Later on though, when Ash returned from the Orange Islands, Brock left Professor Ivy. And when asked what happened, he would break down and get really depressed. There was never an official explanation given, but some fans theorized that Brock found out that Professor Ivy was lesbian, which made him really sad because he had a crush on her. Some people claim that Takeshi Shudo, the anime's main writer, said that she was, but I couldn't find any evidence, so I think it was just fans spreading misinformation for the hell of it. Also, side note, the real behind-the-scenes reason Brock left the show was because the creators thought that the fans in the West would see him as racist because of his eyes, but in all actuality, everyone loved Brock, so they eventually brought him back. F Nintendo. In November of 2019, there was a massive leak for Pokemon Sword and Shield. A Portuguese website named F Nintendo was associated with the leak and was blacklisted by Nintendo. F Nintendo explained that an early copy of Sword and Shield was given to a freelancer to provide coverage. That freelancer then leaked the information online. Regardless of who did it, F Nintendo is still responsible. F Nintendo is now no longer allowed to have any Nintendo games early or even receive them for free, which is really bad considering that's literally in their namesake. Ash's Pikachu in Detective Game. In Detective Pikachu, there's a cutscene where Tim mistakes a random Pikachu to be Detective Pikachu. It's heavily implied though that the random Pikachu is Ash's Pikachu. The Pikachu talks about making their dreams come true, and Detective Pikachu makes a direct reference to the first opening of the anime. Here's the clip. Is that so? Yeah, so I guess you two will make your dream come true. Tell your buddy to be the very best like no one ever was. I want to be the very best like no one ever was. Pikachu also says Pika P in this clip, which I know sounds silly, but that's what Pikachu refers to Ash as. His name in Japanese is Satoshi, so Pikachu calls him Pika P. It's kind of cute. I tried finding what Detective Pikachu says to him in Japanese, but I can't read it, so I had to watch this Japanese guy play through the game. And when he saw the cutscene, he said Satoshi really surprised, so I think it's safe to assume that it's a reference in both languages. Hey, Satoshi? Scarlet and Violet book. In Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, these are two books that were used to document Paradox Pokemon, which is already pretty strange since they wouldn't have existed yet, hence the Paradox. But there are three pages that are very interesting. This page depicts a fusion of Entei, Raikou, and Suicune, but we never see anything like that. The closest thing we have is Walking Wake, but it's just a dinosaur and Raging Bolt, which is a giraffe or something. This page depicts a fusion of Verizion, Terrakion, and Cobalion. And again, we have Iron Leaves and Iron Crown, so we're still missing one from each trio. So maybe they will end up fusing or something. I don't really know. The last page depicts a planet with some sort of creature on top, which might be Terrapagos, but we'll know for sure once the final DLC does come out. Pichu Short banned in Japan. Pikachu and Pichu is the third Pikachu short that came with Spell of the Unknown. However, this short was banned in Japan after the narrator, Sakai Noriko, was arrested in 2009 for possession of drugs. This is the only theatrical Pikachu short to be excluded from the Pikachu the movie premium box. A sports game, Dad'll like that. In Pokemon Red and Blue, if you go to the Celadon City department store and interact with one of the TVs there, a dialog box pops up stating, a sports game, Dad'll like that. And this is just about the only reference we get to Red's father. This line of dialogue not only lets us know that Red's father likes sports, but it also lets us know if he's even alive. By saying Dad will, that implies that they're still alive, whereas if they said would've, it would've implied that they're dead. This line was also kept in Fire Red and Leaf Green. Guzma has fake tattoos. Lumeria from Team Skull has a tattoo of Team Skull logo around her stomach area, but once the team disbandens, she gets rid of the tattoo, which likely means that it was fake all along, unless she got laser surgery, but I doubt it. And she's not the only one to do so. The Team Skull grunts do the same, and so does Guzma. I just imagine they all got the fake tattoos you get from candy sometimes. Evil Pokemon exist. There's a scene in the anime where Ekans says, there are no bad Pokemon, just bad trainers, to Meowth when being told to do evil deeds without Jesse. But in the X and Y anime, there's a Malamar that tries to take over the world by using mind control. And we know that he doesn't have a trainer, which means that some Pokemon genuinely are just evil. Ray slash Ikari are Lucas slash Dawn. It's very heavily implied that the main character in Legends Arceus are an older version of Lucas or Dawn, depending on who you choose. They're said to be around 15 years old and look way too similar to them. It would also explain why they're so good at catching Pokemon, even if they lost their memories. But if this is true, then that would mean that Ikari slash Dawn and Ray slash Lucas are their own ancestors. Like I mentioned before, Legends Arceus has ancestors of many characters, but that also includes the character you play as. If you play as Dawn, your ancestor is Rei, and if you play as Lucas, your ancestor is Akari, which makes things a little 
strange. Because they're your ancestor, they had to have had a kid with someone, and it's possible that this results in an incest loop, and I really hope that's not the case. But it is still possible that they had their own separate children, eventually leading to both Lucas and Don. This is really confusing to think about, so let's just move on. I hate time travel. Ryuki's home region. When defending your title as champion in Pokemon Sun and Moon, you can come across a character named Ryuki. He tells you that he came from a region far away to spread his music. He showed up briefly in Ultra Sun and Moon, and was never seen again after that, so we still have no clue where he came from. Fossil Pokemon have altered DNA. Every single fossil Pokemon that we've seen has been a rock type, which is really strange. I mean, what are the odds that every Pokemon that has been fossilized has been a rock type? This has led to the theory that when a Pokemon is restored from a fossil, their DNA is altered and they become part rock type. Another way to look at this though is only rock type Pokemon can be fossilized, so maybe they were always those types. Pokemon doesn't like Nuzlocks. Former Nintendo Treehouse employees told the Pokemon company that doing a Nuzlocke for a Nintendo Minute would be a cool thing to do, but to their shock, the Pokemon company did not like that idea at all. They said that they considered Nuzlocks to be on the same level as using hacks. Typical Pokemon being out of touch with their fan base. What else is new? Here's the clip of the two employees. We thought that this would be a fun idea for a Nintendo Minute video. We did, which is, yeah. And so we pitched it to the Pokemon company. And we say, did hey, not get slapped. We would like to do a Nuzlocke run. What do you think? And they thought they were going to fire us. They said, here's what we think. Bam! Yeah, no, seriously. <laughs> I, I was like, oh, shoot. So Sorry. they said, we consider this to be on the same level as, as using like hack, a ha or hack, hack game, ROM. ROM hacks. Like how is that the it's same? Like, excuse me? This I don't know just, how, again, how they get to these decisions. This is just a style of playing a game that everybody can buy. There's no hacking. Yeah, they're just not playing using the game. anything weird. That was truly, again, one of the more like, what? Wait, what? Responses. Yeah. It didn't just end there though. Creators doing randomizer nuzlocks were actually getting blacklisted from Nintendo, which might explain why they've never tried contacting me. Over here, guys. Come on. However, this might not be entirely true. Joe Merrick has spoke to the Pokemon company, and apparently they said that they haven't cut out people for doing Nuzlocks or anything like that. They don't care as long as you follow the confines of what's possible in the game. Regardless, it was still pretty fucked up for these former employees to almost get fired over a simple suggestion. Getsus's true name. In an interview, Jinichi Masuda revealed that Getsus's real name was Jesus Harmonia Gropius. I don't know if this is intentional, but Jesus? Like, Jesus Christ? There's no fucking way. Detective Pikachu Facial Recognition Showcase. In 2013, a facial recognition motion capture for a Pokemon game was shown off. This later became the game Detective Pikachu. Apparently this game was originally going to start a blue Pikachu that talks, but there's no blue Pikachu in the final game. Callum and Serena are 17 plus years old. Most people have the misconception that all Pokemon protagonists are 10 years old, but in Pokemon X and Y, we meet a character named Emma who has an Esper named Mimi. Mimi is apparently scared of the player because they're too old, and Emma is confirmed to be 16 years old, which means that Callum and Serena are 17 years or older. Clan leaders wear their creation dragon orbs. If you take a look at Adamant and Irida's necklace, you'll see orbs on them, and they look very similar to the Adamant and Lustrious orb, which belong to both Dialga and Palkia. So maybe it's like an heirloom of some sort? I wonder how they got it though. I bet they don't do anything with it. Ash exists in games. In Pokemon Sun and Moon, we see a drawing that resembles Ash from the anime, which means he exists in some capacity in the games. But if that were true, that means that Blue and Gary coexist despite by essentially being the same person. And this holds true with all of Ash's companions, so this leads to more questions than answers. He shows up in Pokemon Masters EX, which was honestly a huge surprise. Maybe just like how there's game versions of characters and anime versions of characters, this is the game version of Ash. Not exactly the same one as in the anime. Alder was the legendary hero. In Pokemon Legends Arceus, we hear about a legendary hero from long ago, and this hero looks almost identical to Alder. So either Alder's ancestor was the legendary hero, or Alder went back in time to be the legendary hero, which probably isn't true, but the resemblance is so strikingly similar that I wouldn't even be surprised if he was. Inevitable Battle Chatelaine Faller Earlier I mentioned that Annabelle and possibly Ingo are fallers, and these two characters are both found in battle facilities, seeing the Battle Frontier and Battle Subway. So if this trend were to continue, a Battle Chatelaine from the Battle Mason is probably next in line to become a faller. My money is on Evelyn because I like her design and funny hat. Jigglypuff Creepy Image Origin This creepy image of Jigglypuff is infamous. You've probably seen it at one point or another. Hell, I even used it in my first iceberg video and somehow accidentally scared a lot of people. So hell yeah. But I, for the life of me, cannot find the origin of this image, even back then. I remember seeing it for the very first time in a very old Lavender Town Syndrome video or Lost Silver video around 2010, I want to say. But no matter how hard I look, I just can't find the first time this was posted. I think it might be considered lost media at this point. Berserk Gene was a pre-ability ability. In Generation 2, Mewtwo was supposed to carry an item called a Berserk Gene. The developers 
just set it so only wild Mewtwo can carry one, but you can't find Mewtwo in the wild. This item confuses the holder, but boosts their attack by two stages. So maybe this was meant to be an ability before abilities were a thing. It's still possible to find this item near Cerulean Cave using an item finder, which intro has Gen 3 starters, season 2 of which has a wallpaper featuring Torchic, Mudkip, and Trico. I have no idea how they got away with this because this show was made by Disney, not the Pokemon company. Begin on Mew 3. In Mew 2 Strikes Back, when Mew 2 first wakes up, you can hear a bunch of the scientists celebrating their accomplishment, but one of them makes this interesting comment, saying, now we can start working on Mew 3. It's really hard to hear because of all the voices, but it is there. It's these humans. They care nothing for me. So maybe one day there will be a Mew 3. That is, if they weren't all murdered. Yeah. Clara photoshopped her League card. In Pokemon Sword and Shield, many trainers give you their League card. Most of them are pretty normal, but there's one that stands out among the rest. Taking a look at Clara's League card, things seem pretty normal until you look at her Slowbro in the background. It's warping reality! And I don't think she has reality warping power, so there's only one possible answer. She photoshopped her League card to make her boobs bigger, which honestly is pretty fitting for someone who is willing to cheat in a Pokemon battle to win. I just wonder if anyone actually questions it in-game. Mr. Bonding Origins. Mr. Bonding is a character character from X and Y that gives you O powers, but he has a really weird origin story. His backstory is revealed in Oras. Five old guys wanted to retire, and they all fused together using the power of bonding and became one man. This is probably a Super Sentai reference if I had to take a guess. Pokemon 2000 Adventure This was a lost game that was meant to promote the Pokemon 2000 movie. It was considered lost media, with only images to prove it even existed. But recently, it was found and now it's playable, though I don't know why you would want to play this, but you can. Jesse raised in Little Root Town In the episode Hoenn Alone, Jessie says that Little Root Town never changed, meaning that she's been there before. In a later episode, she's shown to have an expired Hoenn contest pass, only further proving that she's from Hoenn. Hitomi. A lot of you probably have no idea who Hitomi is, and that's because she appeared in a very niche Halloween website that was Japanese only. She basically goes around and looks for mysterious things in the Pokemon world, documenting her journeys. I made a whole video about her, actually, and how she might be the Lumio City Ghost Girl, so check it out if you want to know more. Sonic Chu. This abomination of nature was created by Christian, and if you have no no idea who Chris Chan is? I envy you. I won't dwell into the whole Chris Chan rabbit hole because quite frankly, it's too much and last I heard of Chris Chan, they fucked their mom or something. No, I'm not kidding. So let's not worry about that. Sonichu was first posted online on November 24th, 2004. It was a webcomic about a fusion of Pikachu and Sonic and has been widely mocked online for its amateur art style and writing as most of it was borrowed from Pokemon, Sonic, Dragon Ball, and... XL Saga? I never thought I'd be talking about XL Saga on this channel, but hey, I'm not complaining. The comics departed from its original storyline and went on to talk about Sonic Chu's sex life and the author's own personal problems, which was apparently their inability to find a boyfriend-free girlfriend, whatever that means. Then Sonic Chu had a battle with trolls and the series ended with Sonic Chu violently murdering all of them. What a way to go out. I mastered Iron Tail without a tail. In Poke Park, you meet a primate that says something that he probably shouldn't be saying. He claims that he mastered Iron Tail without having a tail, which is already an awful thing to say, but then he has the audacity to follow it up with, and do you know what this means? No! I don't want to know what that means! Scrapped Convergent Magikarp line. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet introduced Convergent species, like Toadscool and Wiglet. Data miners discovered remnants of what appears to be a Scrapped Convergent Magikarp line. Toadscruel is codenamed Oke Geredosu, so it's likely that it was replaced in favor of Toadscruel. Ash is 11 in Sun and Moon. There's an age requirement for trainers wanting to take on the Island Challenge. Trainers are required to be 11 years old, but the last we heard of Ash's age was in the black and white anime, where he's stated to be 10 years old. So maybe he did actually age. Or maybe they just made an exception. Who really knows? Dragons doesn't equal dragon type. There are countless Pokemon that are dragon-like, but lack the dragon typing. And many people find that weird. And Lance acknowledges this when asked about Gyarados being a dragon. He simply states that not all dragons are dragon types, which I guess explains his team, seeing as how he has a Gyarados, Charizard, and Aerodactyl. Sylph Worker was setting a bomb. When the Sylphco building got taken over by Team Rocket, you could find a worker hiding from Team Rocket behind some boxes. They panic at first, but calm down when they notice you aren't with Team Rocket. Then they give you the TM for self self-destruct. Some theorize that she was planning to blow up the whole building using self-destruct. Latios and Latios created Togepi. Togepi's egg has red and blue shapes on its shell, and they just so happen to look exactly like Latios and Latios's markings. Togekiss also looks extremely similar to the Yon duo, so maybe this is another Manaphy and Fiona situation. Jirachi gave Rayquaza a mega evolution. Zinnia explains that Groudon and Kyogre battle every 1,000 years, and coincidentally, Jirachi wakes up every 1,000 years. People got together and
and wish for Rayquaza to stop Groudon and Kyogre from destroying Hoenn, so maybe that very wish is what allows Rayquaza to Mega Evolve without even needing a Mega Stone. N's full name. Something a lot of people may not know is that N actually has a full name. That's right, he isn't just a letter of the alphabet. His full name is Natural Harmonia Gropius, which sounds like something you'd hear on National Geographic. I don't know what the significance of this name is, so it's pretty strange. They could have just left it at N, and I would have just accepted it. Unova Horoscope. Horoscopes exist in the Pokemon world for some reason, which gives the people something to be delusional about because they have no personality. Anyways, unlike in real life, each star sign lasts for the whole month instead of just part of it. So since my birthday is on April 30th, in our world, I'm a Taurus. But apparently in the Pokemon world, I'd be considered an Aries. I dodged a bullet though. I don't want to be a Bouffalant. Whimsicott is way cooler. But yeah, I really like the Pokemon they assign to each star sign. Like again, Whimsicott being Aries, Slink being Gemini, Lampants being Libra, and Gotharita being Virgo. The biggest stretch is probably Braviary being Leo. Because that is not anything close to being a lion. They could have made him stout. Outland or something. Anime is an in-universe cartoon. In the Pokemon world, Pikachu is pretty popular, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. It's popular in real life because it's the mascot of Pokemon, but in-universe, it's just another Pokemon. So what if the Pokemon anime isn't just an anime in our world, but in the Pokemon world too? That would explain why Pikachu has the spotlight. Black and White 023 and Black and White 024 found. In my last iceberg, I mentioned these two lost episodes that never aired. These two episodes were important to the plot and involved Team Rocket and Team Plasma fighting. The script of these two episodes were found in May of this year. Someone had bought them somehow, and thankfully, they were generous enough to share their findings online, allowing people to read it. There's even a translation of it. The episodes are basically just Team Rocket and Team Plasma fighting over the media night. Ash and Pikachu end up destroying it, foiling both of their plans. Magnemite loot. There was a scheme going on in the Japanese Pokemon community to maximize visitors in the joined avenue. They refer to it as a coil loot, which when translated just means Magnemite loot. What you had to do was catch a random Magnemite, go to the GTS, and request for another Magnemite. And you just kept cycling Magnemites around, letting everyone take turns with it like an X. And that's it. Magnemite and 2chan. Users on 2chan wanted to mess with an official Pokemon movie poll that was being hosted on Yahoo Kids Japan for the Garantita and the Sky Warrior movie. Out of nine Pokemon, the top three would receive their own wallpaper as a reward. Everyone expected Garantina, Shaman, and Pikachu to win. This led to people wanting to rig the poll to quote, make the elementary kids cry by making the first place winner a Pokemon who wasn't even the main focus of the new movie. And who did they choose? Magnemite. They also wanted people to help Magnezone and Shieldon win in the poll, since they didn't seem likely to win either. The poll had a very simple oversight. All you had to do was delete your web browser cookie after voting, and you'd be able to vote again. This discovery opened the floodgates, and people abused the fuck out of this exploit. Bots were even made to maximize voting potential. It, for the most part, went as planned, but a group of people came together to counter the trolls. They tried to beat the cheaters at their own game and put Pikachu in first. The poll was eventually closed and reopened, this time with the number of votes being hidden and the cookie exploit being fixed. That didn't stop them though. They found out that as long as they made another Yahoo account, they could keep voting. It was way slower than the original exploit, but they tried it anyway. The poll came to a close and Shaman was in first, Magnemite was in second, and Giratina came in third. Because of how suspicious it was that Magnemite ended up in second place, Magnemite gained the nickname second place on the Japanese side of the internet. Since Magnemite's Japanese name is Coil, the incident was called the Coil Shock, named after the Oil Shock. This incident inspired many more to come though. Japanese fans are still voting Magnemite in polls. In 2021, there was a Pokemon popularity poll in Japan, and they ended up getting Magnemite in third place. Nice job, guys. Mystery of the Mirage Pokemon released in the US first. This was a special episode of the Pokemon anime that was first broadcasted in the United States on April 29th, 2006, and was later streamed on the TV Tokyo Anatelli website from October 13th to October 31st, 2006. This is strange because things almost never air in America before Japan. According to the Pokemon company, they wanted to give a special episode for American fans because it would have been Pokemon's 10th anniversary there. The director of the special, Kunihiko Yuyama, said that their goal was to convey the growth and evolution of the Pokemon anime over the past 10 years. This special was the first time we got to hear the new English dub voice actors, so if the voices sound strange, that's why. Team Rocket took over Japan's Saga Prefecture. Team Rocket attempted to recruit new members in 2017, and the first step of their plan was to invade the official homepage of the Saga Prefecture. Yes, the real-life Saga Prefecture. You may be wondering why they did this though, especially for an official government website. This was done to celebrate the Pokemon anime reaching 1,000 episodes. Team Rocket is apparently looking to recruit 10 million people in the Saga Prefecture to join its ranks. The reason they chose this number is because 10 million, written in Japanese, uses the number 1,000 
2000, Yoshinori Yamaguchi, the governor of Saga Prefecture, is acting as the boss for the campaign, sort of like Giovanni. He's shown with an Alolan Persian to mirror Giovanni having a Cantonian Persian. People also got the chance to see a real-life Meowth hot air balloon in the 2017 Saga International Balloon Fiesta. There was also a Twitter campaign that gave people a chance to win a Team Rocket t-shirt. People also teamed up in a group of 1,000 to form a giant Pikachu shape. Team Rocket themed lights were also on display at the Saga Light Fantasy 2017 event. The website is actually still up if you want to check it out. It's really cool seeing just how far they went to celebrate this milestone. Ruby Sapphire Emerald Glitch Found by a Fish A Japanese Pokemon fan was able to get a Siamese fighting fish, Maurice, and Lala to play Pokemon. The streamer Mutekamaru mapped out his fish tank so that when his fish went to a certain part of the tank, it would trigger an input in-game. The fish was able to beat two gym leaders, which means that at least one of you watching is worse than a literal fish at Pokemon. He was live streaming his fish play the game, as you do, but this time, his fish was able to find a glitch that was undiscovered. In October of 2020, the fish was exploring Pokemon Sapphire Sea Cavern when it used strength, but instead of moving the rock, it duplicated it, which ended up crashing the game. Mudikamaru later repeated the fish's exact movements, which re-triggered the glitch. Nobody online had ever encountered the glitch before, which means that the credit goes to the Siamese fighting fish. Haldea has a dead league. Ida and Nimona mentioned that the majority of students taking on the league stop before obtaining the final gym badge, which means that the Pokemon League could be failing, with Nimona being one of the few trainers that actually succeeded. This might also explain why the Paldean gym leaders dislike Ida. She's forcing them to be gym leaders in a league that's dead. Larry not only has to fill out a spot as a gym leader, but also as an Elite Four member because nobody else can. This might explain why the gym leaders have other hobbies instead of just focusing on being a gym leader like in other games. And it might also explain why Nimona is so eager to fight you. She has nobody else, which is sort of sad. Poor Nimona. Pokemon Adventures arcs are rushed. Starting with X and Y, the manga has been considered rushed with each generation. This is mostly because the original magazine for the manga got shut down, and the frequency of new Pokemon games forces the manga to rush through arcs, with some being put on hiatus for years. The Black and White 2 manga was put on hiatus for X and Y and Oras, and later resumed during Sun and Moon. Guzzlord is a mutated Pokemon. Some believe that Guzzlord is actually a mutated Pokemon from the futuristic destroyed Howley City, but you might be wondering which one. Well, it's none other than Alolan Muk. Alolan Muk are known for eating trash, so maybe they accidentally ate something radioactive, which ended up mutating them, and instead of eating just trash, it starts wanting to consume everything, just like Guzzlord. Another theory is that Guzzlord was originally a Zygarde. 100% Zygarde and Guzzlord have a lot of similarities, like the eye and mouth pattern on their stomach, along with the side arm thingies. Not only that, they also have very similar shinies, sort of like Mew and Ditto. Grappalock smells cheese. This one is pretty simple. Grappalock's cry just sounds like it's saying, I smell cheese. Take a listen. <laughs> Trey, Troy, and Hillary. These three are characters that appear in a sneak peek at Pokemon promotional VHS tape. They're actually related to Ash, being his aunt and cousins. It's really weird because aside from Delia Ketchum, we don't really know much about Ash's family. Ruin Legends. The Ruin Legends are pretty cool, but they don't really match with Paldea being based on Spain. They're all Chinese, so maybe they're going to be playing a bigger part in a different game with a region based on China. That, or I don't know, Game Freak was feeling quirky and just wanted to give them all Chinese names. Ditto reproduces via Mito. When you think about it, how are there so many Dittos? Dittos aren't able to breed with each other, only other Pokemon, and the offspring will never be a Ditto. So the most likely answer is that they reproduce via mitosis, just splitting apart and having a friend right there waiting for them. Beta Gen 4. Around December of 2019, there was a massive leak on 4chan, with an anonymous user simply saying, hey VP, check out these silly sprites, haha, <laughs> and attached a link to a website with hundreds of beta Pokemon. People were skeptical at first, but by comparing them to early footage of Diamond and Pearl, they were able to deduce that these were in in fact real. Some of the sprites have minor changes, and it turns out that there were a ton of gender differences that were scrapped entirely. Rainbow Rocket Mewtwo is evil. In order to achieve Mega Evolution, a trainer and their Pokemon needs to have an unbreakable bond, and since Rainbow Rocket's Giovanni has a Mewtwo capable of Mega Evolving, that means that his Mewtwo is probably evil, just like him. Mew Oreo. In 2021, Pokemon and Oreo had a little collab, where some Pokemon designs would be on Oreos. There was your typical ones like Charmander, Bulbasaur, Squirtle, Pikachu, Dratini, Piplup, Rowlet, Jigglypuff, you know, just normal Pokemon. But there was a very rare design that you were able to get, that being a Mew Oreo. And of course, with rarity comes people trying to make a quick buck. People started selling and scalping these Oreos, and one was on eBay selling for more than $28,000. I don't know who in their right mind would buy one of these though. You gotta be really stupid to buy an Oreo for that much. Hell, even $5 is too much for a single Oreo. Just because something is rare doesn't make it valuable. It's stupid. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire for Switch. Some data was found hinting that Oras was supposed to be poor 
ported to the Switch. The data includes name of previous Pokemon games, like X, Y, Alpha, Omega, Sword, and Shield, but the one that stands out is Omega NX and Alpha NX. NX was the Nintendo Switch's code name. I don't think we're going to be getting Oras ports anytime soon, so who knows what those are doing in the code. Pokemon Black and Blue. Pokemon Black and Blue is a parody game created by PETA. Pokemon Black and White 2 were the most recent games at the time, so they went with Black and Blue as their parody title. You play as a Pikachu who ran away from his trainer, and you have to fight trainers for your freedom or something. It's really gory because PETA wants to scare children into not playing Pokemon. PETA doesn't really like Pokemon because, quote, Pokemon are treated as unfeeling objects and used for things as human entertainment and as subjects in experiments. I don't know why they're spending their time doing this instead of, you know, helping real life animals. Oh wait, I know. It's because PETA don't actually give a shit about animals. How noble. Game Lily likes Elio. In Sun and Moon, Lily mentions that she wants to travel the world with you if you're playing as a boy. If you play as a girl though, her dialogue changes. She doesn't mention anything about traveling with the player, she just mentions wanting to learn from them. This has led people to believe that she has a crush on the male player. Early Shiny Gogo. In pre-release footage of X and Y shown in the E3 developer roundtable, Gogo's shiny form was shown, but it's completely different from the one we see in the final game. I have a theory as to what had happened. Maybe the one we saw was how Shiny Gogo originally would have looked if we kept using whatever methods they had used to create shiny Pokemon in the past, because X and Y did mark the point in the series where some shinies were handpicked. So maybe the one in the final game was one of those handpicked ones. Pimp Knight Fake. Pimp Knight is a YouTuber who makes these Pokemon sweet videos, mainly focusing on people who only use legendary Pokemon, extremely toxic players, and hackers. Some people claim that the videos are scripted, with him either battling himself or asking one of his friends to play against him, but I don't know the validity of these claims. Mew's canon personality. The movie director of the first Pokemon movie said that Mew was supposed to be more of a jerk and bully to Mewtwo. Mew was planned to talk, but it was scrapped. Mew is more impish, if anything, in the final version, but who knows what he was saying to Mewtwo. Lutu. Lutu is, uh, uh, I don't know. There's a lot to choose from. Uh, Twitter user, YouTuber, Pokemon archivist, professor, editor, Sigma Platinum Director, and a saint. Seriously, this guy's a legend. He archives a ton of different Pokemon related things like art, assets, music, everything really. A lot of which probably would have been lost to time if it weren't for his efforts. I'm assuming he at least has a team of people helping him out because this is one hell of a job for one guy to be doing. And he has a Google Drive filled with every asset imaginable. Please go support him if you can. He's doing God's work. Getsus' is frostbite. We never see Getsus without a cloak over his right side of his body, but in the black and white opening, Getsus places a crown onto N's head. And for a brief moment, we see his right arm and hand being darker than his left side. It goes even deeper, with some thinking that Kiram gave him frostbite. There's also dialogue that mentions he's gonna take down the player with his hand, using a singular word instead of plural, Pika Girl. Again like the Pikachu song, this song is really old. It was uploaded 12 years ago, which is insane. It was made by S3RL, and it's like an electronic dubstep type song with Pokemon related lyrics and Pikachu sounds. It's really cringy, but that's just how the 2010s were. The Moon is Clouds. People on 4chan were discussing Sun and Moon's logo along with Pokemon Go, saying that Pokemon Go is the Earth, and Pokemon Sun and Moon are obviously the Sun and Moon, and someone innocently asked about the stars and clouds. And I guess some guy was trying to be a smartass, but it failed miserably because he replies with, the sun is a star and the moon is clouds. That second part making no sense at all. After that, the thread quickly fell apart with people just quoting that guy saying the moon is clouds. Scraps new Jinx form. People found an unknown cry that belonged to Jinx in Pokemon Home. In the app sound directory, you can find a cry similar to Jinx's. <laughs> The first cry you heard was Jinx's, and the second was the unknown one. It kind of sounds like a Mega Evolution cry, so people suspect that's what it was meant to be. Eternal Flower Floet Event We were supposed to receive AZ's Floet in an event or some other way in X and Y, but we never ended up getting it, which is a shame because it looks really cool. Plus, it's extremely relevant to the plot. AZ used the ultimate weapon just to revive it. I'm guessing that we were supposed to get it in X and Y too, but since that never happened, they just gave up. Rose Battle Theme Chanting Chairman Rose's battle theme has chanting in the background. The first chant is in Latin and says, Rose set the credo, which means I believe the Rose. The second one is, go Rose, save everyone, which is honestly really fitting because in Rose's mind, he's doing what he believes is right and he thinks of himself as a savior. Kiram eats humans. Kiram supposedly eats people if they were found outside at night. And I know we usually chalk up folklore to just being scary stories, but I mean, Lucky knows a town built an entire wall to protect against it, so there had to have been some truth to it, which is pretty terrifying. It's also said to be extraterrestrial, which makes this all the more scarier. Something out of this world came to terrorize people. Memory. This is a feature that was introduced in Generation 6 that describes a Pokemon's experience with its current trainer along with its original trainer. I had no idea this was even a thing. You can check a Pokemon's memories by taking 
taking it to an NPC who can read Pokemon memories, and they can get pretty specific and detailed. Hell, this is stuff even I don't remember. This was removed in Generation 7, came back for Generation 8, but was again removed in Generation 9. Clefable flipping you off in Sword and Shield prototype. In the overworld, crudely drawn emoticons would occasionally appear on screen, codenamed as a symbol chat. They all appear to be drawn by the game's director, Shigeru Umori. They're all really cute. I like this one of Gumi, the Cyndaquil one, this one of Pikachu and Squirtle, and this guy squishing Ditto. But then you find one of Clefable just straight up flipping you off. There's some Japanese text on it, and I thought it was just gonna say fuck you or something, but it just says gather up. So this Clefable probably isn't flipping us off, but I still think it's funny. Lenora Mammy. When Lenora made her debut in Pokemon Black and White, people perceived her design as racist. Lenora's original design depicts her wearing a large apron, but concerns arose that people would perceive Lenora's designed to be a Mammy stereotype. The Mammy is often depicted as a dark-skinned woman who wears a handkerchief on her head along with an apron. Because of the similarities, Lenora's design was changed from wearing an apron to having it over her shoulder like a cape instead. Despite all of this though, Lenora's in-game sprites were never altered at all. Not even in Pokemon Black and White 2, which confuses me. They went through so much effort to change her design in the anime, but didn't even bother in the games, which arguably would have been even easier. It's just a sprite swap. Porygon is back. It was thought that Porygon, along with its evolutions would never make an appearance in the anime again after the old incident, but with the Porygon phone being a thing, it's wiggled its way back into the anime. While it isn't exactly a real Porygon, it's the closest we've ever gotten in years. Bidoof's wish caused future events. In Mystery Dungeon, Bidoof made a wish to Jirachi. He wished that more people would join the squad, so it's theorized that Bidoof's wish caused the events of Sky, Time, Darkness, and future Mystery Dungeon games as well. Lost Rare Shiny Pokemon Toy Around Generation 3, there is a red-pink Kingdra in the Pokemon Battle Dome playset. Only photos of it exist, and it's thought to be lost in time. If you were to find this, there's no telling how much money it would be worth. Paldea Crater and Kalos Weapons In X and Y, we learn about an ultimate weapon that was unleashed 3,000 years ago, but where exactly would it have hit? Some people speculated that it might have hit directly in the middle of Paldea. We get to see the ultimate weapon, and it sort of looks like a crystal flower, and terrestrialization has something to do with crystals, along with Area Zero being filled with Glamora, which is a crystal Pokemon that looks very similar to a flower. Paldea is also thought to be directly south of Kalos, so this just adds fuel to the fire. Paldea Atlantis There was something strange found in the code for Scarlet and Violet. They found something called Atlantis, which is supposed to be a code name for something. Some believe that Area Zero's missing land is somewhere up in the sky, with future DLC letting us explore it. Okay, while editing this, we got some more news about the Indigo Disc DLC. Turns out, in the DLC, Blueberry Academy is at the bottom of the ocean. I don't know how we're gonna get there, but I sure hope we don't use an Xbox controller. Why Pokemon Got Easier In 2014, GameSpot asked Jinichi Masuda why new Pokemon games are easier than they used to be. He said it's not because the fans are asking the games to be easier, it's because there's so many free mobile games nowadays, kids might not give Pokemon a chance if it's too hard. That logic is really stupid, and I hope they don't still think that. Knowing Game Freak though, they probably do. Belts and whips instead of gadgets. Originally, instead of earning gym badges, you were meant to earn gym belts, sort of like in martial arts. They thought that the belts could be used as whips during training, but the idea was scrapped because it was too violent for a kid's game. You can still see sprites of trainers holding whips though before they decided to get rid of them. Clay Doll is modeled after Celestila. In Ultra Sun and Moon, Clay Doll's Pokedex entry states that people of an ancient civilization created statues based on an unknown Pokemon, and those statues later came to life. Since the Pokedex is from Ultra Sun and Moon, it's theorized that the ancient civilization was in Alola and the unknown Pokemon was Celestila. When you take a look at Clay Doll and Celestila, you can see some similarities in their structure. Pikachu DS Tech Demo There was a tech demo for the DS that was available at E3 of 2004, used to show what the DS was capable of doing. It's like a mix of Hey You Pikachu, Pokemon Channel, and Pokemon Ami. It was never made available to the general public, but it was implemented into Pokemon Dash's title screen, just not as fleshed out. Pokemon Movie 2000 STD Joke In the English dub of Pokemon 2000, there's a joke that probably flew over a lot of kids' heads, including me. Marin was telling a joke at her table where the punchline was an STD joke. I'll play the clip. And she says, no, but I have Krabbies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but her delivery of this line is really funny. I like it. Krabby's is a play on crabs, which is an STD. I won't go into much more detail than that. That bombshell is for your sex ad teacher. And that's not me. Gets has planned you to meet Arceus. In Black and White's postgame, the Shadow Triad meets with the player and hands them the Creation Trio orbs. They explain that Gets has personally asked them to deliver the orbs to you, but we don't know much more than that. The Creation orbs are used to meet the Creation Trio, along with Arceus. Maybe this was a trap set up by Getsis to eliminate the player and take the legendaries for himself, but like, he had all the orbs with him already, so 
why didn't he just do it himself? Game Freak thought the Nintendo Switch would fail. Apparently, the CEO of Pokemon thought that the Switch was going to be a failure. He said, quote, I told Nintendo that the Switch wouldn't be a success before it went on sale because I thought that in the age of the smartphone, no one would want to carry around a game console. It's obvious I was wrong. This guy's a fucking idiot. Holy shit. It just goes to show how out of touch the Pokemon company is with us. He says he sees potential in the Switch, but remains cautious, saying, currently, the Switch is popular among the early adopters, but there needs to be one more step to attract a wider audience. I see much potential in the Switch, but one shouldn't overestimate its potential. This probably explains why Sword and Shield wasn't the best. They probably just didn't see a point in spending that much time on something they thought would be a failure. At least he ate his words. Sort of. Sword and Shield Paid Reviews Sword and Shield are regarded as some of the worst Pokemon games in the entire series. The majority of people share that sentiment, so that only begs the question, how the f fuck does Pokemon Sword and Shield have a 9.3 on IGN? No matter how you look at it, it just doesn't deserve that score at all. And this isn't just on IGN either. On Metacritic, it has an 80, while the user reviews are at a 4.7. It has an 8 on Nintendo Life, so what the hell is happening? Some people think that the Pokemon company paid reviewers to give this game a good score. And you might think that's dumb, but scores actually play a huge role in a game's success. Your average fan would probably just look at a game's score, see if it's high, and if it is, they'll buy the game. And personally, I think this is just one big conspiracy theory and reviewers only like the game because it was easy. The easier the game, the easier and faster it is for them to get the review out, but that's just a theory. That's it, I don't know why you're still here. Boys need a new piece of eye candy. Masamitsu Hidaka was a director and storyboard artist for the Pokemon anime. He confirmed a bunch of theories like the GS ball being related to Celebi and Brock leaving the show for a bit during the Orange Islands out of fear that Americans would think that he's a racist stereotype. He also confirmed that Misty would not return to the main cast. However, this entry isn't about any of that. In an interview, he joked that part of the reason Ash's female companion switched from Misty to May and later to Dawn is because quote, boys need a new piece of eye candy to look at every once in a while, which is a little creepy because the girls he's calling eye candy are like 10 years old. And he also said girls are more customizable and you can change their outfits, like when they're in their bathing suits. Yes, you heard me right, he said that. Which makes things even more creepier. What killed original Pokemania? Pokemon was immensely popular in the 90s, but the hype died down after Generation 1. Which is strange. You would think after Generation 2 it would only grow even bigger, especially with how great gold and silver were. So what happened? I think it might have just been a fad, like with many things in the 90s. Yeah, Pokemon is still a immensely popular, but there was a point in time where every corner you turned, you'd see a Pokemon related thing. Game Freak making forums to delay 1000 Pokemon. Some people share the belief that Game Freak has been delaying the inevitable. I'm not really sure what they would get out of this though. Maybe as like a special number? They have been slowing down with the amount of Pokemon they add in each generation, so I guess I can see why people would think that, but I just think that there's no real reason behind it, so it's probably just people looking too deep into it. Pokemon Amino. Around 2016, Amino was being pushed out as this app where you could socialize with people and share your interest. And Pokemon was one of the communities that you were able to join. And back then, I think it was actually a pretty good app. But now if you go to it, it's nothing but a deserted wasteland of what once was. A lot of people there are interesting to say the least. And I've heard some horror stories from there. And it's just overall not a great place to be. It's filled with role players, groomers, and god knows what else. The app is on life support, and to be honest, they should just pull the plug already. N's concept art. N's original design is a lot creepier than what we saw in the final game. It depicts him as a deranged man with a scary face wearing a grey turtleneck. The only thing scarier than his face is his fashion statement. I wonder just how different this version of N was supposed to be. Maybe he was a lot more sinister than the final version. Zorua trailer researcher was Ingo. In Zorua's revealed trailer, a researcher found a Hisui in Zorua, but was attacked by it. People suspect that this might have been Ingo. The best evidence to support this theory is the fact that the person in the trailer has the same voice actor as Ingo in Pokemon Masters EX. Garatina exists, but doesn't. Pokemon Platinum's distortion world is based on the concept of Sakasa Fuji, which is the reflection of Mount Fuji on the water's surface, a bizarre distorted world that doesn't exist, but also does exist. The mountain exists on the lake through human eyes, but it's only a reflection and doesn't exist. You see it only when you are looking at it with your eyes. This is sort of referenced in the Garatina movie when portals of the distortion world come from reflection of surfaces. Hilbert slash Hilda died. During Black and White 2, the protagonist's mom from the previous previous game mentions their child is searching for N in a different region, which is confusing because N is in Unova at the same time, so you should have passed by them at some point. They might have passed away at some point, with their mom being in denial, or even mistaking Nate or Rosa for their child. Shipping. Pokemon shipping has been a thing since forever, but it's more prevalent in the anime community. But people get really defensive and toxic with their ships, and I'm not gonna lie, it's kinda weird so I tend to stay away from all of that. Each ship has their own unique name, like Amore shipping being Ash and Serena, Poke shipping being Ash and Misty 
Misty, Advanced Shipping being Ash and May, the list goes on forever. Rainbow Rocket Giovanni is Pokemon Go Giovanni. In Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, you face off against multiple villains from past games, but they're from an alternate universe where they all succeeded. After you defeat Giovanni, he tells you that he will look for a new world to unleash his evil schemes on. Then, two years later, Team Rocket appears in Pokemon Go, where Giovanni says that Earth is where he shall unleash his evil schemes. He uses those exact same words, which probably means that Rainbow Rocket Giovanni is the same one that appears in Pokemon Go. Movie 20 Mewtwo has human DNA. It's never explained how exactly Mewtwo from this movie can mega evolve on its own, but there's a theory that Mewtwo has human DNA which allows it to mega evolve on its own. We also don't know much about the creation of Movie 20 Mewtwo, so it is plausible. There are no laws against the Pokemon. I hate the internet. This entry refers to a short skit about Joker telling Batman, I caught a little Pokemon Batman. This Pokemon ends up being a low pony, and he says the phrase, there are no laws against the Pokemon. That poor low pony. Here's the clip. I caught a low pony, Batman. I caught a low pony. It's an animal, Joker. You can't. Batman, there's no laws against the Pokemon, Batman. I can do whatever I want with it. No, go, go, go. No, don't do it. I'm gonna do it, Batman. N is half Pokemon. In Pokemon Evolutions, N calls Getsus his father, but Getsus gets mad and tells N not to talk to humans like himself. His mother could have been a Zoroark, either transforming into a human or someone's bar dropped really low one night. This could also explain why N can understand Pokemon and Getsus calling him a freak. Poke Fables. In 2000, in 2008, a YouTuber named Insert uploaded a video that would mark the start of a nearly 40 episode series of Pokemon stop motion parodies that would span 10 years. The humor is similar to that of an abridged series of Pokemon, and this series did extremely well. Poke Fables wasn't the only hit on their channel though, there was also Super Mario Fables, but he hasn't uploaded for the past couple of years so I think these two series are over. Volo is immortal. The very last thing Volo tells you is that he will conquer the world no matter how long it takes, whether it's years, decades, or even centuries. This would be a pretty bold claim to make, but it wouldn't be if he's immortal. I think he's just coping. Aster. Aster was a lore keeper with special powers who preceded Zinnia, and the only person to ever be permitted by Rayquaza to write it. Aster is said to have passed away, and Zinnia named her Whismer after her. From what I could find, it seems as though Aster was Zinnia's grandmother, since she mentions Granny when you talk to her in Meteor Falls. The name Aster comes from a genus of flowers, just like Zinnia. It also starts with an A, as opposed to Zinnia's Z. It might have also came from Aster asteroid as well as disaster. Two words that fit the theme of the Delta episode, but it might just be a coincidence. Vessa was a spirit tomb. In Legends Arceus, you can complete a quest for a girl named Vessa. You collect 107 wisps with one missing. That last wisp is implied to be Vessa herself. Slowpoke is omniscient. Slowpoke is slow, who would have guessed? But this theory goes on the claim that Slowpoke is actually omniscient. He can't process all the information at once, so they're constantly zoned out. This, as a result, would mean that evolving it into Slowbro would make it dumber instead of smarter. And Slowking would be as smart as Slowpoke because the toxins from Shelter help it focus its infinite thoughts. Anime Acerola's Mimikyu. In the anime, Acerola has a Mimikyu that's a ghost. Not a ghost type Pokemon, a literal ghost. It's never explained how this happened, but it's really strange. Game Freak's Greed. Game Freak, while not as greedy as some other companies like EA or Activision, is still pretty greedy. They cut a ton of corners and still charge full price for their games. The 3DS games arguably have more content than some of the Switch titles, and those were only $40, so why are all of the Switch games $60 despite all of the issues. We're all puppets to Game Freak. No matter how bad the next Pokemon game is, we're still gonna buy it no matter what. And they know that, and are more than willing to extort us. Disputed Pokemon. There's some creatures in the Pokemon world that have never been officially identified as Pokemon, but they do exist. A good example of this would be the Pokemon that was modified and became Genesect. Another one is the original Galar fossils, before they fused them into these monstrosities, or even the Substitute doll. There are many more examples, so I might just make a separate video on this someday. Rainbow Rocket Getsus killed his N. In black and white, Getsus's plan is to have N capture Zekrom or Reshiram and then eliminate him to steal it for himself. Since Rainbow Rocket Getsus succeeded in his universe, we can assume that he went on to finish his plan of killing N. Wally's illness stunts growth. We know that Pokemon Red and Blue and Ruby and Sapphire take place at the exact same time, and in Pokemon Sun and Moon, we get to meet an older version of Red and Blue, and they're noticeably way older. We also get to meet Wally at the battle tree, but something isn't right. He looks exactly the same, which doesn't make any sense. He should have aged just like Red and Blue did, but he still looks like a kid. This could be because his illness actually stunts his growth, not allowing him to grow any older. But there is an alternate theory. Wally dies young. When you battle Wally and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire on Victory Road, you can see red flowers in the area. These flowers are called red spider lilies, and they symbolize death in Japan. This might imply that Wally is going to die soon, which might explain why he stopped aging. He passed away. Giovanni drowned himself. In the Celebi event in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, after you defeat Giovanni, he walks out of the cave. After that, you hear a loud crashing sound. 
not the usual exit sound that plays when you exit an area. People have theorized that after losing everything, he jumped into the water and drowned himself, as he has nothing left to live for. Celestica People Disappearance The people of Celestica disappeared for an unknown reasons long before the events of Legends Arceus. Remnants of their civilization are still there, but the mystery remains unsolved. Toxapex was made to deter people from 6v6 singles format. Toxapex is one of the best Pokemon to stall with, and in singles, it dominated. So people think that this Pokemon was created so people can play how the Pokemon Company wants you to play with the doubles format. In Generation 9 though, it lost Scald and Knockoff, which balanced it a little more thankfully. Pokemon don't lay eggs. Nobody has ever seen a Pokemon lay an egg. Besides, how would certain Pokemon even lay eggs, let alone make them with other Pokemon, like Waylord and Skitty for example? Some Pokemon that are clearly mammals still lay eggs, and Pokemon like Kangaskhan are born with a baby in the pouch. Eggs just don't make any sense, so maybe Pokemon don't lay eggs at all. Maybe they just spawn in from some sort of energy or something. Overworld items were held by dead Pokemon. There's a theory that the overworld items that you find were once held by a Pokemon, but they unfortunately passed away. Unable to hold on to their items any longer, they dropped them, leaving them there until someone else can make use of them. Guzma was abused by his father. On Route 2 in Pokemon Sun and Moon, you find a house that might belong to Guzma and his father. If you interact with the golfing clubs, the game informs you that the clubs are all bent, and when talking to the father, he says that they were trying to set their boy straight, but got beat up for that. It's pretty grim for Pokemon to include this detail. BGC mass shooting foiled. In 2015, Kevin Norton and James Stumbo made threats on a Facebook post. Stumbo joked about, quote, killing competition at the Pokemon World Championships. He also posted a photo of a shotgun and AR-15 rifle on a car. Both of them were stopped when they tried to enter the tournament building in Boston. Cops discovered that they had also brought guns, ammo, and a knife. Norton and Stumbo were arrested and charged for carrying firearms. It's really scary to think about what could have happened if they were never caught. Looker's Krogunk Although he doesn't battle using his Krogunk, we know that Looker had one. It's basically his partner. In Pokemon X and Y though, it's said that one of his Pokemon was killed, but they never specify if it was Krogunk or another Pokemon. It most likely died while in a case, which must have been tragic for Looker. That's like if Ash lost his Pikachu. Masuda signed leaks. Before the Alola starter final evolutions were officially revealed, their concept art was leaked online for everyone to see. A fan who happened to be in Japan at the time made fan art of them and brought them directly to Junichi Masuda after winning a chance to meet him at a Tokyo Skytree Pokemon Center. Upon seeing and signing it, Masuda said something along the lines of, these haven't been officially released yet, which is surprising. You would think he would be panicked or even mad, but it seems like he really didn't care. So this leads to another theory. Game Freak leaks their own info. There are a ton of Pokemon leaks, a suspicious amount of them, so some people think that maybe it's actually Game Freak themselves leaking their own information to generate hype. I doubt that's the case, but it is strange that there's so many insiders leaking information. Pokemon War Before you fight Lieutenant Surge, he mentions being a former soldier, and his electric Pokemon saved him during the war. Some believe that this war was between Kanto and Johto, since they're so close to each other. Blue's parents and Red's father might have been casualties. However, Black and White 2 talks about a war that happened in Unova, so maybe Lieutenant Surge is from Unova instead, or Kanto and Unova were at war with each other. Cheating in VGC Despite cheating not being allowed in VGC, many people still do it, and some people aren't the best at hiding it, some openly admitting to it. Kefotics on Twitter analyzed every 2023 Pokemon World Championships team and has found countless hacked Pokemon on people's teams. This wouldn't even be a problem if Pokemon just made a website like Showdown so everyone has access to the same Pokemon, but until then, cheaters will always have an unfair advantage. Blossom's design changed due to Jinx controversy. Blossom's early design showed it having dark purple skin, but the skin color actually made sense since it matched the design of Oddish, Bloom, and Vile Bloom. But because Blossom has a more humanoid design than the other three, it was more likely to resemble Blackface, so they changed it so another Jinx incident didn't happen. Game Freak must have come to that realization pretty late into development, though. They published Blossom's dark skinned artwork before Gold and Silver released, but when the games hit store shelves in Japan, Blossom's sprites had been changed to have green skin with a purple dress, so the change was made sometime between promotion and release. After that, all future artwork and sprites depicted Blossom as green, and dark-skinned Blossom was never seen again. Red lost to Rainbow Rocket Giovanni. Rainbow Rocket Giovanni mentions how he felt nostalgic when battling the player in their battle. If he felt nostalgic, that might imply that he already battled Red, and likely killed him after so he didn't foil his plans. Arceus's design is a hand. Taking a look at Arceus, its design may seem normal, but some claim that it is the hand that shaped the Pokemon world. In my last iceberg, I talked about Eternatus being the corrupted hand of God, and it looks very 
very similar to Arceus if you get rid of its head, so maybe it is a hand that has become corrupted. Team Plasma Chiro. Team Plasma's logo looks very similar to Chiro, a Christian symbol. I made a joke about Getsus's Japanese name sounding like Jesus, but maybe it actually was intentional. Team Plasma's outfit also looks very similar to a Crusader's, a religious knight. Rotom Dex is unreliable. Now that Rotom is part of the Pokedex starting with Sun and Moon, it's believed that Pokedex entries have become unreliable now. Rotom is known for being mischievous, so for all we know, it could just be spreading lies. Usain Bolt and Team Skull. There was a Crunchyroll commercial for Sun and Moon that featured Usain Bolt as a member of Team Skull. The video is private now for some reason, and these commercials were Japanese exclusive. I don't know why they used Usain Bolt to promote Sun and Moon, but it's pretty funny. Toby Fox is back. In my last iceberg, I mentioned that Undertale creator Toby Fox put a male impregnation song in Sword and Shield. Yeah, it's a long story. Well, anyways, Game Freak didn't seem to care about this because they brought him back as a composer for Scarlet and Violet. He composed the Academy theme, Terror Raid Battle theme, Academy Ace Tournament theme, Battle Zero Lab theme, and the Area Zero theme, Whitewashed Nessa. When Nessa was first revealed in an E3 trailer, fans loved her design, so they started creating fan art of her. But the trouble started when Japanese artist Najuko drew some fan art of Nessa. People accused them of whitewashing her because she has a noticeably lighter skin color than what was seen in the game and her official artwork. Some people were defending the artist, saying that Nessa has a lighter skin tone in this image because of a pastel or muted color palette along with the lighting. This resulted in an all-out war breaking out on Twitter, with people trying to explain color theory, redrawing the image, and showing what colors they think the artist should have used. Pokemon fans are never happy. No matter what the Pokemon company does, fans will never be happy. This community is known for being extremely toxic in every corner, and that isn't going to end overnight, no matter what Game Freak does. The toxicity will bleed into anywhere it hasn't and spread like a virus. Pokemon banned in Turkey. In the year 2000, Turkey's government ordered a TV channel to stop airing the Pokemon anime after two children leapt from balconies believing they had superhuman powers. It doesn't just end there though. A seven-year-old girl and a four-year-old boy were both injured in falls from high-rise buildings in two separate incidents. For some reason, they attributed the cause of all of these incidents to Pokemon, which they claim shows creatures that can do things such as leap from balconies. It sounds like the parents trying to shift blame from themselves. This was the first country to ban Pokemon, but this ban only lasted until 2002. Chateau Poisoning The old chateau has many ghosts, and some believe that the chateau's residents were all poisoned. Evidence pointing to this is an antidote found in the trash cans of one of the rooms. Ash's death in the original draft of the first film. In the original trailer of Mewtwo Strikes Back, Pikachu is seen with an older looking Misty and a child. With Ash being turned to stone, he was probably meant to die, and Pikachu would go with Misty. Unless Ash just turned out to be a deadbeat like his father. The original movie director debunked this though. They claim that this isn't supposed to be an older Misty. It's just a random woman, but I don't know. It looks way too similar to her. And the fact that there's a Pikachu there waiting for her fuels the theory even more. Wigglytuff orchestrated Pokemon Mystery Dungeon 2 events. Wigglytuff might not be as dumb as he's made out to be, actually being a genius in putting up a facade. The player has a vision of how to enter Waterfall Cave, and the vision has a silhouette of Wigglytuff, but when questioned, he says that he has no idea what you're talking about. Your partner has never gone on an expedition before, so why would they have the relic fragment in the first place? It's likely that Wigglytuff took it and gave it to your partner, and he knew that the player would come back in time all along. Korean VGC Metronome Protest in June of 2023, a group of Korean players were banned from a BGC tournament after they coordinated a protest where they used Pokemon that only knew Metronome. They were protesting because they weren't happy with the way the Korean League managed the competitive events, like having battles in a best of one format and banning players for no reason. These four Korean players protesting were banned because they were apparently using hacked Pokemon, which made people even more mad because instead of listening to their feedback, they banned them and moved on. Pokemon Scientific Names Much like animals in our world, Pokemon also have scientific scientific names. We know this because of a Pokedex entry stating that Oddish's scientific name is Audium Wanderous, which sounds absolutely adorable. The only other Pokemon that we know has a scientific name is Kabutops, whose name is Kabutops Maximus. This sort of reminds me of the naming scheme Paradox Pokemon use. While they're not as literal as Raging Bolt, it's the closest we've gotten to more scientific names. Pokemon and humans are separate. Masuda claims that humans and Pokemon are separate, but Sinnoh folk tales talk about a time where humans and Pokemon may have been viewed as one and the same. In the library, it states, there once were Pokemon that became very close to humans. There once were humans and Pokemon that ate together at the same table. It was a time when there existed no differences to distinguish the two. What changed that distinguished them, though? Getsus starves Wayless to evolve early. The theory goes that Getsus forces Wayless to evolve by starving one of his heads, forcing the other one to evolve early. High Dragon only has one head, but Wayless has two, so one of them had to have died. If this happened to a Pokemon, it would obviously hate its trainer. And Getsus's High Dragon has a max power frustration. Acid Rain. Acid Rain is a glitch that can occur in Pokemon Platinum, Heart Gold, and Soul Silver that triggers when multiple types of weather are active at once, damaging all Pokemon on the field. Even though it was discovered before
before the English release of Platinum, they never bothered fixing it in the English release or in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. If any weather effect is an effect excluding rain, and a player uses Pursuit on a Pokemon that is switching out on that turn and causes it to faint, this glitch will become active. Upon sending out the next Pokemon, the weather will have changed, and all four types of weather will be occurring at once until the battle ends. Neat explained. In a Game Informer interview, they asked Masuda if meat in the Pokemon world is Pokemon. Junichi Masuda says, there's a lot of fruits and vegetables in the world of Pokemon. There is also a variety of snacks and various candies and whatnot that come from the different regions. The Pokemon world is much more technologically advanced than the world of our own, so perhaps there is probably a lot of different food that we can't even think of. It basically goes on to explain that the meat in the Pokemon world is artificial, so I guess that answers one of the many questions about the Pokemon world that we have. Silver and Giovanni are not blood related. In the Pokemon Adventures manga, Silver has the blood type AB, but Giovanni has an O blood type. This would make it impossible for Giovanni to be Silver's biological father, due to the genotypes not being correlated to one another. Machoke's skin is being ripped. Some think that the red lines on Machoke could be his skin being ripped apart because of how large its muscles are, which I could imagine is very painful for the Pokemon. Player's original life. The player from Mystery Dungeon forgets their past life. We have no idea which world they came from or how their old life used to be, but we can assume that they're just meant to be us, being taken from our own world into the Mystery Dungeon world. Jack Red. Jack Red is a glitch trainer that can be found in Generation 1. Its name is derived from a combination of names that the player can choose for themselves and their rival, those two names being Jack and Red, creating Jack Red. You can battle Jack Red by performing the Ditto glitch with a special stat of 200, and unlike other glitch trainers, Jack Red doesn't have a sprite and can crash the game instantly. There is also a ZZAZZ variant of Jack Red, who can be found using the same method, just with using the move Growl one or two times. If you escape the battle, the player will be in a glitch city, and if you open your menu, the game will lock itself. Mato's Hand Mato was the illustrator for the Pokemon Adventures manga until Volume 9, and was replaced by Satoshi Yamamoto. The reason she was replaced was because she got some sort of sickness that was never specified. Anywhere you look, it just says that she got sick and her hand became too weak so she was unable to draw. She actually does still draw on Twitter though. Her Twitter handle is MatoBook2016, and her art looks really good, so it's likely that she recovered or maybe she just got really good at drawing with her other hand. Ronsei is a super continent. Taking a look at the Ronsei region from Pokemon Conquest, you can see little segments of regions we've already visited in other games. Ronsei could be the Pangea of the Pokemon world, with it breaking off in the future to become other regions in modern day Pokemon. Legends Arceus Timeline It's not explicitly said how long ago Legends Arceus takes place. Some people claim it to be around 100-ish years ago, which just doesn't seem right. When I think of Legends Arceus, I perceive it to be around maybe 200 years ago. 100 just seems way too close to the modern day timeline. They claim that Pokemon are terrifying creatures, but AZ was befriending one 3,000 years ago, so surely in those 3,000 years something would have changed. Lavender Town has no bodies. It's said that Lavender Town has bodies of dead Pokemon, but that might not necessarily be the case. Lavender Town could just contain the Pokeballs of dead Pokemon. In Gold and Silver, the tower is remodeled into a radio station, with anything from the original tower being shoved into Mr. Fuji's house. His home has much less room than the tower did, so that could mean that the Pokeballs are what's left to remember dead Pokemon. Unless he just chose favorites and told the other dead Pokemon to fuck off, but I doubt that's what happened. Furry Bait Starters Starting with Generation 6, there's constantly been a starter that people would consider to be Furry Bait. Delphox in Generation 6, Primarina and Incineroar in Generation 7, Cinderace in Generation 8, and Miascarada in Generation 9. So some people suspect that Game Freak might be doing this on purpose. There's no way that they're completely unaware about what people draw. This has to be some sort of marketing ploy to get degenerates to buy more merch or something. Takeshi Shudo Drugs The original director of the Pokemon anime, Takeshi Shudo, would heavily consume alcohol and tranquilizers while writing. He claimed that it helped clear his mind while he was working, but this ultimately ended up contributing to his failing health. He said that when he can't drink, he takes tranquilizers instead. He says he has methods to know if he's been drinking too much and he's reaching his limit. His methods consisted of reciting 10 digits of pi, asking himself what 1 plus 1 is, explaining the Fermat's principle, and explaining the Poincare conjecture. When any of those became difficult, it means that he was at his limit, and if he drinks any more, he won't be able to work as effectively. This kind of explains all of the wacky journeys Ash went on in the early seasons of the anime, but it's pretty sad that this ended up contributing to his demise. Ditto Mew clone answered. In an interview in 2012, Jinichi Masuda was asked about Ditto being a failed clone of Mew, and he claims that this is the first time he's ever heard that rumor, and ends it at that. When asked if that was his only answer, he said, in 
in terms of how Pokemon are designed, they are each their own unique living being. The unique thing about Ditto is that it's a Pokemon that can change forms, but each Pokemon we create with its own unique element, so we just make sure that they're all individual life forms of their own. I have no fucking idea what he's even talking about, it's like he's dodging the question and just spouting nonsense. Unknown and Ultra Beast Connection According to Pokemon Mystery Files, a website Hitomi briefly appeared on, scientists theorize that there's a connection between Unknown and Ultra Beast, which is honestly pretty insane because we never hear about this anywhere else, and Ultra Beasts are very mysterious creatures, so maybe Unknown is an Ultra Beast. Other Ultra Beast starters We learn that Poipole originates from Ultra Megalopolis in Ultra Space, and it's apparently a popular starter Pokemon, or I guess in this case Ultra Beast. So what are the other starter Ultra Beasts? The type trio could be Ground, Poison, and Grass, with Poipole already having the Poison part covered. We just gotta see the other two. Meltan Home Region Meltan has no confirmed home region, which is really bizarre. Meltan comes from Pokemon Go, and Pokemon Go takes place in real life. So, could Meltan be a Pokemon from Earth? Creatures Inc. Yasukuni Shrine In January 2019, Creatures Inc. posted a tweet showing their staff members visiting the Yasukuni Shrine. The shrine honors fallen Japanese soldiers according to Shinto tradition, but it's highly controversial due to having several military officials that were convicted of war crimes. This caused outrage among fans from South Korea and China, two regions that Japan colonized and committed war crimes to. The tweet was deleted, and an apology was issued by Creatures Inc. on their website and on the Korean and Chinese Pokemon website. Sites. Generation 2 prevents you from breeding. Every 250 steps has a small chance that the compatible parents will lay an egg, since at the end of the day it's just a coin toss. You can in theory go on forever without getting an egg, if you're unlucky. In Generation 2 only, if the defense IVs of two Pokemon are the exact same, and the special IVs are either the same or different by 8, they can't breed. This is because of how IVs are passed down from parents, which suggests that the Pokemon are basically related. Tup voiced based on Jesse Pinkman. There's a Team Skull Grunt named Tup in the English dub of the anime, which sounds like Jesse Pinkman, a character from Breaking Bad. Someone asked Tup's voice actor, Billy Bob Thompson, if this was intentional, and he confirms that it was. Ah, uh, like I came to you begging to cook meth. Oh hey, nerdy old dude I know, you wanna come cook Crystal? Please! Those tacky uniforms tell me you're not from Alola. Where are you from? Kanto, you masked dork! What's a Kanto? Bootleg San Antonio Pokemon Center The River Center Mall in San Antonio, Texas has this bootleg Pokemon store called Pokemania. From what I can tell, most of the products there are bootlegs, and surprisingly, it's still up and running till this day, and I don't think it's leaving anytime soon. It's already been there since 2017, maybe even longer. Even though the store is called Pokemania, you're able to see Dragon Ball related stuff along with Demon Slayer. Guess they had to broaden their horizons. Red depressed after Generation 1 Some theorized that after the events of Pokemon Red and Blue, Red became depressed, knowing that he was now the strongest trainer in the world and nobody can come close to him, so he went to the top of Mount Silver, not to train, but to isolate himself, hoping that somebody will one day surpass him and he can finally have something to work towards. I guess it really is lonely at the top. Old Chateau Rotom belonged to Cyrus. In the Rotom room you can find in Diamond and Pearl, you find two journals, one belonging to Sharon and the other having an unknown author, but it's implied to be Cyrus. It can't be Sharon because he's never seen a Rotom before. In the journal, the author finds a Rotom and befriends it, and it says that they'll be friends forever. There's only one Rotom in the entire game, that being the one found in the old chateau, so it's likely that this is the same Rotom. This might just be a coincidence, but Cyrus from Rainbow Rocket is the only member to interact with the Rotom decks. Mega Stones can be created. There's one massive plot hole relating to Mega Evolution. How exactly does Mewtwo have a Mega Evolution? Not just one, mind you, two of them. Mewtwo didn't exist when the ultimate weapon was fired, so a Mega Stone for it shouldn't have formed. This probably means that people can make Mega Stones, so maybe we'll be getting more of them in the future. Pikachu localized as a big breasted tiger in the US. In an interview with the Pokemon Company president, Tsunekazu Ishihara, he reveals that Nintendo of America had some really strange ideas for how Pikachu should be localized in the West. They said that the original design was too cute, so they submitted their own designs, and he couldn't believe the kind of stuff they were proposing. They had apparently turned Pikachu into a tiger with huge breasts, looking like something from the Cats musical. When he asked how is this supposed to be Pikachu, they said, well look, there's a tail right there. This probably would have killed Pokemania in the West if they did do this, and four kids would have one hell of a job censoring Pikachu. Pokemon anything. Pokemon truly has corrupted us in our collective consciousness. Think of any product. I can almost guarantee you that there's a Pokemon variant of it. Pokemon utensils? Already a thing. Pokemon lamp? Been there, done that. You aren't able to escape it anymore. You could probably live exclusively off of Pokemon related merchandise at this point. Misfortune GB. Many people remember playing a game called Misfortune, but there's no proof of its actual existence. 
existence. Similar to Polybius, the game has no credits, so it's not known who created it. You play as a young boy exploring a gothic building. The player is then met with an entity. They don't say who they are, but some claim that it's a representation of Baphomet, or Beelzebub, or even the devil. The being says it exists within the very fabric of reality, and asks if you wish to challenge it. Saying yes sends you to a bunch of maze-like rooms, each filled with pit drops, locked doors, keys, and traps. The most well-known level is one with four small cabins. It says, choose wrong, and misfortune will befall your loved ones. Are you ready to play? If the player makes a mistake, the screen will cut to black and show a detailed image of a demon along with a dialogue box reading, I am God here, in what appears to be blood-styled writing. In the late 1990s, people started talking about this game, claiming that the side effects of this game was depression and dread shortly after seeing the game over screen. Prominent members of online forums who talked about feeling these symptoms were thought to have died or disappeared when they suddenly became inactive without warning. Many people believe this to all be just one sick joke. People attributed these side effects to be caused by the game's soundtrack. This is believed to be the inspiration of Lavender Town Syndrome. Again, no ROMs of this game exist, and those who have played it stumbled upon it on accident. According to these people, some Game Boy games contain misfortune in them. You were able to trigger it by cheating or glitching in the game, and depending on what game you trigger in, misfortune would borrow assets and spreads from its host game. Games it's known to be in are Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, Spud's Adventure, Uchi Karat, Ada Liar Mary, and Pokemon Red. Some recreations of this game exist, but some warn against playing such a game. Do any of you remember playing this game? The Pokemon World. Although we might perceive the Pokemon World to be fun and positive, the harsh reality is that it really isn't. Each region has its own evil team that they would have to worry about, some worse than others. But their reign of terror would have continued if it wasn't for the player. Children have to travel the world alone. There's the constant threat of Pokemon killing you, and some believe that Pokemon takes place after a war, which is why there's so many absent father figures. Some also believe that the Pokemon world is structured to create strong trainers to fight in a war when they're ready, encouraging them to defeat each gym and challenge the champion, which would funnel them into becoming a strong trainer. It gets much worse, but I'll explain it later down in the iceberg. Pokemon take over the future. The future paradox Pokemon and Pokemon Violet have people wondering, what happened to all biological life? Is everything replaced by machinery? And is the future doomed to be a dystopia? These future paradox Pokemon are really strong, and if it weren't for us closing the portal, they likely would have taken over our world and destroyed it too. Relicanth is the perfect life form. In Pokemon Ultra Moon, Relicanth's Pokedex entry reads, the reason it hasn't changed at all in a hundred million years is that it's apparently already a perfect life form. Relicanth is based on a Colicanth, a fish that has also barely evolved over the past 100 million years because their habitat doesn't change either, but Colicanths do still evolve, whereas Relicanth doesn't, so maybe it is a perfect life form after all. This also means that we will never see a regional variant of Relicanth, since it wouldn't need to adapt to anything. Pokephilia Waifumons There are a ton of Pokemon that people have sexualized for absolutely no reason, on top of Vaporeon being one. Others consist of Hatterene, Alcremie, Lilligant, Meoscarata, Udra, Meloetta, and so much more. The list can go on forever. It's really strange because some of these don't even resemble a human at all, like Alcremi for example, and some are related to very specific fetishes like Gudra. I have no idea what this slime goo fetish is called, and I don't really want to google it to find out. I don't think Game Freak designs these Pokemon like this on purpose, it's probably the internet just being the internet. The King Nappy The King Nappy was a well-known Poketuber who did primarily Nuzlocks. Nappy and Hoodlum Scrafty had a falling out, and neither one of them would explain what had happened. This was all explained though when Nintendo Decoder and Vegas Jamie were exposed for showing credit behavior. Most of the group knew and tried to help Nathan, but they didn't expose him. Nappy was peer pressured by his fans to call him out since his voice would have been the loudest because of his following, but something happened that nobody saw coming. Hoodlum Scrafty exposed Nappy for grooming him into a relationship when he was only 16 years old, while Nappy was 22. He wasn't sure about his sexuality or comfortable with the age difference, but he went along with it anyway. After they broke up, Nappy bans Callum from the little group they had, which explains why he was absent for a while, and if you think that's where the story ends, you'd be wrong. It gets so much worse. Stormy Kingdra also came forward and exposed Nappy for forcing him into a relationship when he was 17 years old. Game Boy Luke also exposed Nappy for attempting to get into a relationship with him, and while it was legal, he still felt extremely pressured to do it. After rejecting him, Luke was blacklisted from the group for a bit. Nappy responded to all of this in a Twitch stream, explaining his side of the story, coming out as bisexual, and made the story sound like an incoherent mess, ending the stream shortly after. Then in 2019, Nappy returned on Twitch, explaining his disappearance relating to personal 
issues, and that he would explain by the end of the stream. He started his blind Let's Play of Sword and Shield and ended stream without any explanation, making many people mad. Then, Numb Nexus, JYT Gamer, and Shady Penguin said that Nappy was self-serving, selfish, unwilling to help others despite his wealth, and overall a toxic figure. He tried making another comeback four months ago, but everyone is pretty much done with him at this point. First, Dead Faller. As I mentioned earlier, Fallers radiate a certain energy that attracts Ultra Beasts. Looker explains that there was a previous female Faller before Annabelle, but she's heavily implied to have been killed by Guzzlord. The International Police has taken note of this, so they use Fallers in their missions to locate Ultra Beasts, without the Fallers knowing that they're simply being used as bait. Ten years before the events of Sun and Moon, Nanu, Looker, and an unnamed female Faller were tracking an Ultra Beast. The Looker hesitated for a moment, and the unnamed Faller was done in by the UB, as Nanu puts it. The way they talk about this incident heavily implies that the female Faller did not survive the mission, which makes it pretty disturbing that they were willing to put Annabelle at risk without herself even knowing. Tentaquil. This was a fake Pokemon created by a VP user during a Draw Your Favorite Pokemon thread on July 22nd, 2010. They created a strange creature that sort of looks like a blue polytoad with bushy yellow eyebrows and yellow claws. When asked what it was, they simply replied by saying, it's a Tentaquil. Since then, it's sort of become an unofficial mascot for the board and has appeared in a few ROM hacks with the ability Immunity and signature move called Puke Blood. But fast forward to 2018, the Pokemon Gold and Silver beta was leaked to the public, containing tons of unused sprites, items, and Pokemon. But to everyone's shock, there was an unreleased Pokemon that stood out among the rest. This Pokemon looked almost identical to the tentacle drawing. Some say maybe the original artist saw it back in the 90s from pre-release screenshots, but others think that this is proof of the Mandela effect and people slipping into parallel worlds. And the artist just so happens to come from one where Tentacool is a real Pokemon. Master Ball not mass produced due to ethics. It's said that Pokemon can choose whether they want to stay in a thrown Pokeball, depending on whether they believe the trainer is worthy or not. This is further backed up by the fact that some traded Pokemon are not willing to listen to their new trainers, until they have enough gym badges that is. The Master Ball, however, has a 100% catch rate, meaning that the free will of the Pokemon is no longer taken into consideration. So mass producing Master Balls would effectively make any Pokemon trainer using them a slave owner, which isn't exactly something you want to be known for. Pokemon Marriage Apparently there was a time where Pokemon and humans could get married, which begs the question, why did they think this was okay and at what point was this considered taboo? This sort of change doesn't happen overnight, and why did this catch on in the first place? DMCA'd Haven Comic There was an NSFW Pokemon fan comic that ended up getting a cease and desist from Nintendo, which is strange because companies don't usually go after people creating Rule 34 artwork. The comic was created by Insomniac Overlord and involves Pokemon going to a resort to breed. They likely sent the cease and desist because the artist was posting it on their Patreon, requiring users to pay for it. That only begs the question though, how the fuck did the Pokemon company find this? Insomniac Overlord has since created an original comic by the name of Passion Tail Isle. That's basically the Haven comic but using original characters instead of Pokemon. Mystery Dungeon takes place in a Rainbow Rocket universe. Rainbow Rocket consists of villains from universes where their plans succeeded. The consequences of some of their plans however would mean the end of humanity as we know it, leaving a world where only Pokemon exist, and also leaving remnants of civilizations. An example of this would be the decrepit lab friend area in Red and Blue Rescue Team, an abandoned lab built by humans long ago, left to fall into disrepair. It is now the home to Pokemon. So humans did exist in the Mystery Dungeon universe at some point, but they're no longer around. Pokemon uses Lamarckism instead of Darwinism. Lamarckism is the belief that organisms can pass physical characteristics to their offspring that their parents acquired during their lifetime, similar to Pokemon passing down moves, IVs, abilities, Pokeballs, natures, and forms down to their children. Darwinism utilizes an entire species for natural selection, using random mutations to pass down to their offspring and seeing which one would best benefit the creation. I suppose Darwinism could apply to regional variants instead, since those did evolve to have different traits over time. Anime is a parallel world. The entirety of the Pokemon anime takes place in a parallel world. The protagonists don't exist here though, and when they do, they don't fulfill the role they were supposed to, so is this world forever doomed without them? Why do some characters completely cease to exist? Everything is so similar yet so different. 1996 Pokedex Lore Book In 1996, there was a pocket monster encyclopedia detailing many facts about Pokemon and insane information about the Pokemon world, one of those being the origins of Pokemon. Apparently, pocket monsters first appeared 2 million years ago. The first study of Pokemon was undertaken in the late 18th century by a French author, Baron Tajirin. Pokemon spread throughout Western Europe to include England, Germany, Spain, and Italy. In step with the incredible progress of transportation technology, the academic movement found a home in Japan at the end of the 19th century. This book also confirms that Red is 11 years old and has disturbing imagery of Pokemon killing children. Diglett was the first Pokemon. The question, who is the first Pokemon, has many different answers. Bulbasaur, 
Dinosaur, Rhydon, Mew, Arceus, Rowlet, and Vectini. Rhydon is famously known for being the first Pokemon designed by Satoshi Tajiri, but Shigeki Morimoto mentioned that he made up Diglett when he was still a kid, meaning that Diglett was created before Rhydon by decades, making Diglett the first Pokemon ever conceived. Berlissify. Berlissify is a YouTuber that a lot of people don't like because of his toxic behavior. He really does not like anyone who cheats in video games, and yeah, don't get me wrong, I think cheaters are lame too, but he takes it to a different level by attacking other YouTubers and making full-on videos about them. He just has beef with pretty much everyone, and I'm probably going to be next one of these days. He had a lot of beef with Poketips, which I don't know how that's even possible. He just uploads tips and tutorial videos. I can't really get into every controversy because that's way too much lore, but two things he's notorious for saying is the spirit of Pokemon, whatever that means, and hating Legends Arceus. I think it's fine to have your own opinion, but don't attack people over it. Just agree to disagree and move on. Distant Kingdom Pedo. A Twitter user made a tweet saying, pedophilia is not a mistake it is a crime, and I think most, if not everyone, can agree with this statement, but a YouTuber known as Distant Kingdom quote retweeted saying, should you be jailed for your thoughts? Which is such a fucking wild thing to say about pedophilia. Naturally, backlash followed, but he stood his ground and said, but should those thoughts, or any thoughts, be illegal? Which is what I'm asking. Someone responds to him saying, but I don't get your argument. All the threat is saying is that pedophilia is wrong. You can't punish people for their thoughts. It's if they act upon said thoughts that becomes the problem. That being said, if you are having thoughts like that, get help. And instead of back down, Distant Kingdom doubles down saying, pedophilia is wrong, but is it a crime? And when told yes, it is a crime, he says, so a non-offending pedo should go to jail? I have no idea what's going through this man's head. These aren't normal thoughts people have. People also find it strange that he uses a mod to get rid of the majority of Marnie's clothes, and mods that make the player character barefoot. He has a lot of explaining to do. Daycare, sex tape, college humor, now known as dropout because apparently a ton of people got fired. I don't know, that's a whole nother thing I won't get into. Uploaded a video where they claim that you could unlock a sex scene in Pokemon X and Y. In the video, they claim that using cut on the bush outside of the daycare gives you access to a window, allowing you to watch your Pokemon breed. The cutscene that plays is an animation of Ditto and Snorlax breeding, and while not necessarily being graphic, I'm not going to show too much of it, if at all. Eventually, the Bidoof he used to cut down the bush shows up, and they have three players in the scene. Many people were convinced that this was real when they were younger. Giratina and Necrozma, Abrahamic symbolism. Giratina represents Satan, and Necrozma represents Lucifer. In Judaism, Satan is more of an agent of God that tempts people into sinning whereas Lucifer is a fallen angel who tried to rebel against God. Eratina isn't really evil, just seen as bad due to his antimatter destroying things. Ultra Necrozma radiates light and is super bright, which mirrors Lucifer being called the bearer of light or morning star. Pokemon Go Death Count I found a website that documents every single death that has occurred because of Pokemon Go, and it's pretty grim to say the least. At the time of writing this, there's been 24 deaths and 62 injuries. I'm not sure if this website is still being updated as the last incident was recorded on August 18th, 2022, but it's scary to think that something as innocent as playing Pokemon Go can lead to such tragedies. Misty transforming into Vaporeon. This is an edit of a scene where Ash and friends are getting zapped by lasers. The art style closely mimics the original series, which caused many people to believe that the scene was from a banned episode. It honestly fooled me too. When I saw it, I was like, I don't remember this scene from the anime. <laughs> Apparently, there's now an edit by the same artist of Serena turning into Brakeson, racist slash pedophilic Smogon staff. Smogon has had many scandals involving its staff members. Some of the more notable ones are Goddess Briella, a mod and 30 year old man who claimed to be a lesbian girl to groom young girls, Ponter, a site admin who was caught grooming teenage girls, and numerous other members like Rodon, who all of them had a private Discord where they shared highly racist views and doxed someone. Smogon has attempted covering these incidents up by removing posts talking about them. Precious Leaf. Precious Leaf was a user that frequently posted on 4chan's VP boards as well as Twitter, making his first appearance in 2019, single-handedly ruining all of VP and Leaf threads for years. The best way I can describe Precious Leaf is the Chris Chan of the Pokemon community, just with not as much lore. He obsessed over the character Leaf to an unhealthy degree, getting into fights with anyone who says anything bad about her, and just overall fighting over her. He also seemed to believe that Leaf was a real person, and gets really mad if you call Green Leaf, and vice versa. People believed him to be a schizophrenic and mentally unwell. He claimed to be around 30 years old, and says that he 
he loves Leaf, but not sexually, and didn't understand the concept of sex apparently. He also owned a ton of super rare Charizard cards, and believed that he himself was red, but something nobody saw coming happened. It turns out that Precious Leaf has been trolling everyone for the past four years. A person everyone thought to be a schizo and a complete idiot has been playing the whole community this whole time. His true identity? A user by the name of Mario to Plumber. If you recognize his name, it's because they were the same person who hated Rosalina so much that he bought a fuck ton of Rosalina amiibos, spending over $4,000 because he didn't want any of her fans getting them and quote, cooming on her. Mario to Plumber also had some involvement with the Grinch League for Smash Brothers, uploading videos where he laughed at the idiots who believed it and was just having a villain monologue pretty much. He predicted the day that the Grinch League came out and claims that nobody will ever come clean with who exactly did it. Back to what I was saying though, he made over 65,000 tweets on the Precious Leaf account and that's not even counting the ones that aren't on Twitter. He also joined many Pokemon Discord servers and tweeted an image of Leaf every day without fail, kept up to date with every new piece of Leaf information, spent hours spamming photos of Leaf every where he could, made a bunch of edits of Red and Leaf together, recorded himself crying, destroying things, and freaking out, spent thousands of dollars on Pokemon Masters EX along with merchandise, all for four years straight. And we only know the truth because his real life wife accidentally ended up revealing that this was all a joke by posting an image of a park and people linked it back to an image of Precious Leaf. And that's when the world knew the truth. Afterwards, he said, this persona took a lot of dedication and work for me. Basically, if I wasn't doing anything in real life, I would make a video of my true thoughts through an exaggerated persona. I would create a ruse with some people. He even had a whole list of how to keep this persona up that I'll throw on screen right now. Nobody, and I mean nobody, expected him to be a troll. Not even the entirety of 4chan, which makes people wonder just how much longer he would have kept this up. Well, I was actually able to get an interview with Precious Leaf himself. He said it was okay for me to talk about this, so... Thank you. He told me that he was going to reveal that all of this was a joke in December of this year. I asked him just how much of all of this was a joke, and he said that 50% of the persona was real. He still does claim to love Leaf a lot, but this is most likely referring to his actual wife, who cosplays Leaf. I'm not sure if he's still going to do his big reveal in December since, you know, cat's out of the bag, but to be honest, I think this ending fits better than whatever he had planned. He basically ended up manifesting Leaf to become real, and shocked the world either way. He uploaded a short video of Leaf in Red talking about her ruining the finale, with Precious Leaf taking her with them to the new channel anyway. Porky man. A heel is a Rule 34 site that uses tags to categorize everything. Nintendo actually ended up issuing a takedown to Pahil because the Pokemon tag got more traction than the official Pokemon website, causing it to appear at the top of search results. The Pokemon tag on Pahil is now under a new name, now called Porky Man. Justin RPG. This is an infamous user who claims that he's married to Reshiram and in love with a ton of other legendary Pokemon. He writes bizarre, detailed, etchy fanfiction about him and his legendaries, with shitty edits to accompany them. He's most known for his I Love Reshiram song, which sounds so comically bad you would think that it's ironic, but it's not. I love Reshiram. I am married to Reshiram. Reshiram, I love. People have memes one of the lyrics where he says love each other over and over again, calling it love each other instead. As long as you love each other, love each other, love each other. Love each other. Jethrotex. Dylan, also known as Jethrotex, was a Pokemon YouTuber who brought joy to many people. He was one of my favorite Pokemon YouTubers because of his comedy. He was just really entertaining, but unfortunately, tragedy struck. He suffered from a brain tumor and took a while to recover, but it seemed like all was well for a while. He announced that he was going to take a break from YouTube for a while though. However, things took a dark turn. Dylan took his own life. His two friends, Zelda Master and Munching Orange, made tweets explaining what had happened. Munching Orange and Zelda Master are both filled with guilt that they couldn't be there for their friend. His story is really sad, and may his legacy live on. Poke Community Owner is a pedophile and scammer. Poke Community is a forum that a ton of fan game and ROM hack developers are a part of. However, in March of 2018, the site became the spotlight of a hashtag MeToo movement when it was discovered that the owner, Steve Heffron, was a convicted pedophile and sex offender. It's also suspected that he siphoned money from the site for personal use. As a result of the movement, several members left and disowned the site, taking their projects with them. Lost Pokemon Center. In November of 2001 to mid-2004, there was a Poke Pokemon Center in Manhattan, New York. Mysteriously though, very few photos exist and there's almost no videos of the store. Some claim that the employees prevented people from filming, but it's not known how accurate this information is. It's also not known why the store was rebranded into Nintendo World, but some think that the store just didn't meet the Pokemon company's expectations. Others claim that employees were stealing from the Pokemon store. Now here's the interesting part. There's almost no record of the store's existence from the Pokemon company. There's a timeline of stores on their website, but the Pokemon Center New York store is completely absent. If you were to ask 
asked the employees of Nintendo World, which has now been rebranded again as Nintendo New York, they'd claim to know nothing about it and simply say that the store was closed or that they weren't allowed to talk about it. So you might be wondering how I even know about all of this. Well, Julie, also known as 2 Love L, left a comment on The Last Iceberg. They're a co-author of PokemonCenterNewYork.com, which is a website that they, along with their friend Grace, created to preserve the history of this lost store. Julie claims to have asked the employees many times over the years since they live in New York City, but have only gotten employees to talk about the store once. If you have any stories or information about this Pokemon Center, go contact Julie or Grace so they can document it. April of this year was the 25th anniversary of the first Pokemon Center store, but even now, they're trying to erase the store from history. From what Julie has gathered, most employees didn't want to say too much in fear that they would get into legal trouble, but they basically said that the store had a lot of problems behind the scenes, and the Japanese Pokemon company wasn't happy about it at the time. Junichi Masuda false rape accusations. When the hashtag bring back national decks movement was happening, an anonymous user made a Twitter account claiming to be an ex-Game Freak employee. They then proceeded to post fake sexual assault accusations against Shinichi Masuda. Many of the accusations were ridiculous and unrealistic, one of the most notable ones being that Masuda would force his employees to use insects for sexual gratification. The fact that they used the hashtag bring back national decks is what caused many people to immediately not believe it, since it's obvious that they were just doing this to cause drama. This caused the already brewing storm to become even more out of control during the national decks drama. Once things settled down, bugs and anus became a meme on 4chan's VP board, even being referenced in Pokemon Clover. It's pretty disgusting that someone would not only make these false claims, but do it when there was already a ton of drama already happening. Ash Werewolf Doujinshi This is a doujinshi, or a self-published fan comic where Ash turns into a werewolf and does awful things to Pikachu. All graphic content aside, it's one of the very few NSFW Pokemon works to receive a cease and desist from Nintendo. Nihilego is a metaphor for meth addiction. The neurotoxin that Nihilego produces gives others a feeling of great power, making it feel like you can do anything, similar to the euphoria drugs in real life give and reduce inhibitions, again, just like drugs. It drives other people in Pokemon to violence, like drugs, and is known to enslave people using its venom, sort of like how drugs quote unquote enslave people so that they'd be willing to do anything to get more. Nihilego's rock typing might be a reference to drugs like crack and crystal meth that have a rock-like appearance. Lusamine was a good person who fell victim to Nihilego's control, which is likely a metaphor for drugs. Her research focused less and less on finding her husband and more on Ultra Beast themselves. Maybe she was using drugs to cope, but fell deeper and deeper into her madness, to the point where it was impossible to escape. When you finally confront her, she's no longer herself. She became one with Nihilego and lost herself to drugs. BGC Misconduct In 2012, a Pokemon World Championship took place in Birmingham. However, Pokemon VGC competitors from Spain were fighting while drunk and throwing their literal shit at each other in a hotel corridor. They understandably upset the staff and several guests, so the police were called and had them leave. One of the people who were fighting was none other the winner of the world tournament, Ruben Puig Le Sugui. His title of winner has been stripped by the Pokemon company for failing to maintain high standards of behavior conducive to the family-friendly environment. Ruben claims that this story isn't true, and that his friend was the one who did all of this, and he had no part in it. There's no way of knowing what the truth is, though. It says that that very tournament from 2012 was the last time he competed in an official tournament, so it's likely that the Pokemon company banned him for good after the incident. Satoshi Tajiri has autism. For many years, several outlets have reported that Satoshi Tajiri has Asperger's Syndrome, a form of autism spectrum disorder, and that it partially led him to create the series because collecting is a common behavior with people on the spectrum. Everyone that claimed that Tajiri had autism read it from a 2009 biography on Tajiri titled Satoshi Tajiri, Pokemon Creator. The book had a ton of errors and false information, one of those being that Satoshi Tajiri was autistic. The author, Lori Mortensen, claimed that she got the information from a Satoshi Tajiri MySpace page, which was most likely fake. Game Freak Information Coordinator Yuri Sakurai even commented on this, confirming that Tajiri was in fact not autistic. Takeshi Shudo's Original Vision for the Anime Takeshi Shudo made a novelization of the Pokemon anime, and this version of the anime is way darker. Gym leaders barely get paid, and would be fired if they lost three times in a row. Ash's mom lied to Ash, telling him that his father and grandfather were great Pokemon trainers, and later revealed that they had no success, calling them both failures. Ash apparently started his journey when he was 10 years, 10 months, and 10 days old, and Delia Ketchum apparently turned down 100 men asking to get with her, but the one man she did fall in love with left her, and shortly after leaving her, her mother died, leaving her only with Ash. She doesn't love her husband anymore, and if he did come back, apparently she would just ignore him. Pallet Town barely has any job openings, so most people become a Pokemon trainer because they have to, but nobody from Pallet Town has ever became a famous Pokemon trainer, not even making it to the top 1000, aside from Professor Oak, who placed 931st a long time ago, so they treat him like some sort of local hero or god, even naming the town after him. Belia Ketchum was described as being really beautiful and looking really young for her age, even being mistaken as Ash's sister. Apparently 
her and Ash's relationship was described as being that of two friends. The world is described as awful. The entire police force is run almost entirely by one single family, which is bound to lead to corruption at some point, and most people who become a Pokemon trainer at a young age end up wiping out due to their lack of skills and suffer with money problems due to them being unemployed. Most people who sought out to be Pokemon trainers fail, ending up becoming useless in society because they spent their whole life doing essentially nothing. Only two volumes were ever published, the second volume only going up to Lieutenant Surge. Volume 1 was published in 1997 and Volume 2 in 1999, and while it does say to be continued in Pocket Monsters the Animation Volume 3, it's safe to assume that we're not getting a third volume. The novelization is really grim, but honestly, I'm really intrigued and want to keep reading. I want to make a full video about it later, I just gotta finish reading it. But there is another thing stated in this novelization that is very strange. Age of Consent in the Pokemon Universe. According to this novel, the Age of Consent in the Pokemon world is 10 years old. 10 year olds are treated as adults who can get married and go to jail. This is wrong for so many reasons. Apparently education ends in primary school at the age of 10, but students are free to continue into middle school if they want to. April following your 10th birthday is when you're able to get a Pokemon license, allowing you to have Pokeballs. There's a law that states after you leave primary school and you're 10 years old, you're legally an adult. You even have to pay taxes. The point of this law is after leaving primary school, you make your own life choices, and according to the novel, anyone under 18 doesn't qualify as a minor anymore, not even 14 or 15 year olds. If you were to steal from a store, you'd get arrested no matter how much you or your parents apologize. It also states that if they wanted to, an 11 year old boy and girl are free to marry without parental consent. I'm not sure why Takeshi Shudo made this a part of the world, but he did go out of his way to state it multiple times. Ashes end. Takeshi Shudo didn't expect the Pokemon series to last much longer, so he began planning on how he wanted the series to end. He revealed how he wanted Ash's story to come to a close at the end of Mewtwo Strikes Back. Months and years pass. Ash grows old. Then one day, he suddenly looks back on his past. He remembers his childhood fondly, the adventures he had with his amazing Pokemon, the friendship, the coexistence. Maybe Ash wasn't able to experience these things later in life. However, as a kid, there was Pikachu and lots of other Pokemon, Jesse and James, and Mewtwo, and so much more. Elderly Ash remembers everything that happened during his adventures as a young boy. He can hear his mother's voice. Go to sleep already. You're setting off on your journey tomorrow. The next morning, he's woken up by his mother. He's a young boy again, leaving his house excited to start a new adventure. He's going on a journey not to catch Pokemon or become a Pokemon master, but to discover the meaning of existence. Discover how to coexist with others. It's really somber yet inspiring at the same time. Although Shudo passed away in 2010, he left behind his vision for fans to read and wonder what the Pokemon world could have been. Anime's final episode. Takeshi Shudo also wrote an ending for the Pokemon anime. Pokemon would stage a rebellion, much like Spartacus in ancient Rome. Although at first glance Pokemon appear to be friends with humans, they would realize that they're actually being used like slaves, which would lead to an uprising. Pikachu would become the leader of the revolt and end up fighting with Ash, essentially taking the role of a revolutionist. Team Rocket, who are in possession of lots of sinister Pokemon, including Meowth, who can translate the Pokemon into human speech, would try to mediate the conflict, but they do a poor job at interpreting and only make things worse. He then went on to explain that an episode like this would break the rules of the Pokemon world and make it impossible for the series to continue. He said if it were to ever happen, it would have to be the very last episode ever. He tried thinking of a different plot, but just couldn't, which I guess means no matter what, Pokemon and humans are destined to fall apart. And that concludes the iceberg. This video took so insanely long to make, I severely underestimated it. I hope you all at least learned one thing in this video, and chances are, you did. So I would super duper highly appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel, I promise you won't regret it. If I got anything wrong, cut me some slack, there's like 400 things on here, I'm not perfect. Also, come on guys, wake up! Wake up. I know some of you slept through this whole thing, so make sure to watch it again with your eyes. Like the video, follow me on Twitter, join the Discord. This winter is gonna be hell. Bye everyone.